What's going on? It's Brian B. Miller here with one of the hardest working men in hip hop today. Russ, what's going on, man? Thanks for coming, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Somewhere in the greater undisclosed area in Georgia. <laughs> yes. Or with the logo in the pool. Yes. <laughs> the infamous logo in the pool. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, despite the apocalypse, Russ. Sure. This year has been an eventful year for you. You released yeah. 15 singles, mm -hmm. two EPs, yeah. one EP, and a fucking partridge in a pear tree. Like, two EPs? Did I do two EPs? Well, the deluxe version. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll shake the wow. snow globe. Right, 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 right. Like, was it your intention to double down with so much music this year? No, I mean, I feel like that's just kind of always what I've done, is yeah. just put out a bunch of music, and uh, I obviously <laughs> didn't know this whole shit was about to happen, yeah. but not going to say I predicted it, <laughs> but my album was called Shake the Snow Globe, right. and, the, and the meaning behind Shake the Snow Globe was me feeling like in my personal life, right, that I needed a reset, yeah. that I needed to shake up my own snow globe and shake the cobwebs out and reset. And now my ego and my narcissism <laughs> thinks that the world revolves around me. So I'm pretty sure that this pandemic happened because of me. Because and of shake you. the snow globe. Absolutely. <laughs> you have the loud numbers no, in like your I, pocket too, man? Right. <laughs> no, nah, but it's like, you know, you do some, I'm obviously kidding, but Kind of not, right. but you know, you you ever have those moments in life where you feel like you're just, uh, you're like connected, you yeah. know, like you do things, like me calling the album Shake the Snow Globe and it's about a reset, boom, drops on January 31st, next thing you know, in two months, the whole world gets right. reset. And I don't know, like, obviously, like I said, the ego in me is like, I told y'all, but like, it, it is kind of crazy. I have to call you Rush Stradamus or something like that. I'm not mad at it. <laughs> but nah, like, you know, I just, I love to drop music and yeah. it's, John Mayer had a quote, I think one time in an interview where he said, if if you wait too long to drop your own songs, like you're late to your own party. Yeah. And I'm always like kind of mindful of that and a little scared of making something that I love on March 1st. And if I, you know, hear it too much by August 1st or December 1st, I hate it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, you hate it because you've heard it a million times, yeah. but like there's people in the world, like that's a brand new Russ song, yeah. you know? But it's hard to, it's hard to take that step away and kind of see things from outside yourself. But yeah, yeah I was going to flood regardless, I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, the last yeah. 11 months have been hectic for everybody. So how has the pandemic affected you? Uh, it just allowed me to self-reflect more and, and make more music, you know, because it obviously took touring off the table and yeah. travel for the most part. Uh, but it was, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate because I've set up my career to be pandemic proof. Mm. Not that when I was setting up my career, I was like, just in case a pandemic happens, <laughs> right. but it's pandemic proof via mailbox money, you know, and via ownership and, and owning my masters and things like that. So TuneCore checks didn't stop, yeah. you know, like if anything, I've made more money on TuneCore this year than I did last year because I was able to record more, which means I was able to put out more right. and I went fully independent. So I flooded and, um, and plus you have the studio here at the career. studio at the house. Yeah. So. Yeah, pandemic proof for sure. Right. Yeah. But then you also set the tone mm -hmm. this year, like you said, with Shake the Snow Globe. But I also feel like you, you know, you let you put your flag down with the Rick Ross record. Guess what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you really liked that song because I feel like that was better than the attention it got. Really? Yeah. Like, but that, that's the conversation I always have with my friends. And just like, I, I've talked about it a couple of times, like ability versus visibility. Mm. And... I think that's the dilemma a lot of artists are constantly fighting is like artists who might think they're really, really ill. And it, it's just like, damn, but why aren't more eyes on me? Mm. And then there's a lot of artists who there's a lot of eyes on them, but we know like they're not, it's not that dope. Yeah. You know, it's that, it's that balance, man. It's hard. Like there's always those songs you feel like as an artist, I'm like, y'all sleeping on da, da 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 da. But guess what? To be honest though, you know what? I take back what I said about it didn't get as just due. Because I didn't, that's not a hit format of a song. Right. And it's still gonna get a plaque based off the numbers right now. So I'm, I'm glad that people actually were receptive to that style of rap from me, like my fans. But it felt meaningful though. Cause you it had was, yeah. Rick Ross with one of the most impressive verses I heard from him this year. Yeah, And yeah. of course produced by Boy Wonder. So which, you can't... which we've talked about is just like chosen. Yeah. From like, he just has a very tight allegiance with God. <laughs> Boy Wonder is one of the greats. Yeah, but um, yeah, I think, you know what, guess what is though to me too? Cause let's be real, right? The hook is not really 
a, the hook is a flex. Yeah. The hook is like a flex, and it's just like a lifestyle update, <laughs> right? But I think because the ability is so high, like I know Ross went fucking crazy, but to me, that's one of my best verses ever. Yeah. Like the cadence on that, and just there was a pocket I was in that. I have those moments in the studio where I'm like, nah, this is really, really crazy. It's I really think everything record. I do is crazy, but I'm like, this is like a really, this is solid. So when Ross sent his verse, how impressed were you with it? Really impressed. <laughs> I still like, man, it's crazy. You don't have to try to remember things when they just remember themselves right. type of thing. Like, you know, in that moment, I'm just listening to Ross send his verse back in the studio down here and... A part of you, I guess, hopes that that moment will be captured forever. You damn near wish it would be filmed. It wasn't. Yeah. But it's like it was filmed in my head. And like I still, I remember everything about it. I remember where I was standing, like <laughs> outer body shit. Just because it was so hard. Right. And to hear him use kind of like that similar flow. Yeah. Guess what, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, man. Like Black Thought did that too on Chomp. Yeah. When he used that, the, 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 like the flow and the cadence type of thing of... Uh, I've been hot since before Crack Rock. You mm -hmm. got your mind if you think I'm going to stop. Like, the fact that he took how I ended my verse yeah. and he ended his verse the same way, I'm like, that's black thought. Like, y'all can't tell me cool. shit. Yeah. Like, y'all might have thought that, like, I got, I did my verse after his, but it's like, nah, like, I always send my verses first. Right. But also, just start, stay on that record for a little bit. Yeah. Boy One of Desert Production. How did you get, how does this record come, come about? So, I met Boy Wonder via Jake Fane who used to work at Sony ATV. Okay. He's a dude who, uh, who introduced me over there. And just like one of those guys that really believes in me, and that's who I like doing business with and, and working with is, regardless of your resume mm. and whatever, not to say his resume isn't great, oh, yeah. but regardless yeah. of your resume and any of that, if I can feel you really believe in me and really like trust the vision and everything and just believe in me, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sold because I know you'll go harder for me. Like someone with a whack resume, right? Yeah. But who believes in me is gonna go harder for me and get me more shit than someone with the craziest resume who's just like, mm, I'm okay on this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he just was always trying to hustle and make and make connections happen. So he connected me and Wonder, because Wonder's with Sony ATV at the time being, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I think. Um, and we just locked in, just sending packs and shit right. together. And that first pack Wonder sent, uh, had Civil War in it. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was like the second song I ever did with Wonder with Civil War. Damn. Was, yeah, so. So, so far you guys are like 2 and 0. Yeah, so far. <laughs> even though like he knows, like we got like 20 something songs. So like, I don't know. I feel like I'm so fucking competitive, man, that when new producers, when I link with them, I'm always like, man, I got to send them a song back right now tonight mm. so that they know I'm not bullshitting. Like I'm with it. But I'm also like conscious of, I want to go, I know, I know what's up. Like, I know people like to make great music, but I know y'all want plaques too. Yeah. So I'm always conscious of like, I really want to make sure I get plaques with everyone I fuck with. Right. So that they don't feel like they're wasting their time. Right. I don't know them well enough to know that they might be down to just make 300 songs with an artist right. and they never get a plaque for any <laughs> of them. But I'm like, I want to make sure that y'all know like we're really in here doing some like big shit. Right. You know, so it was cool to... um catch Civil War with Wonder and then obviously catch Best on Earth but and guess what and have that like like I said that song's gonna get a plaque but on some just great music shit that yeah. shit is hard it's that's a, a timeless record. song like it's a great Raw Snap I Went Crazy the beat is ill and it's like the other thing too about that beat a lot of times and I'm the worst at this cause I, I just number my beats mm. like one, two, three, four, five, or I'll just call it whatever the sample is for my own sake so I can remember the shit but Producers, like, a lot of times what y'all name the beats dictates the energy of the song. Like, really? the name of the beat for Guess What was Black Mafia Beat. And I am i don't know if I told Wanda or if I was, like, telling Boogus, like, yo, this beat just sounds like a black and white video in Texas. Maybe I was telling Edgar. Yeah. But, like, that just gave me the energy of, like, I'm about to just boss up and rap yeah. and flex. And guess what? I just put my glove on my mm, pool, mm, guess yeah. what? Because it just felt like I'm in the back of a Rolls Royce with a fur. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because the name of the beat was Black Mafia. Same shit with um, Live from the Free uh, Live from the Villa Freestyle. The name of the beat was Live from the Villa. Oh. I just had to keep it because it was just, it just was ill. Like it just it resonated went. with me. Yeah. Right. I was like, I, I had like flirted around with different titles and shit, but I was like, nah, I'm going to just name it that. So I guess like 
maybe a indirect word of advice to producers is like <laughs> it does matter what you call the beat sometimes right for someone like me it actually does help right you know because i'm like where were you at when you made this mentally and that might especially when you're sending beats over text and shit mm. it'll help me probably connect more so with where you were at mentally when you did this since right. we can't be in the room together right. so yeah so it all worked out yeah that's how it, that's how it goes down with russ yeah. but um what I also noticed is that this is your last album on Columbia. Shake the, Shake snow, the snow Globe. Shake the Snow Globe. Yes. Uh, you know, why did you decide, and now you're independent. Yeah. Why did you decide to go that route instead of, you know, staying with the label? Um, so my time with Columbia, right, it was There's Really Wolf Zoo, Shake the Snow Globe. Yeah. Um, and it was cool. It was good. I had, there was like a, a really uh, a solid, like, group chat that I was in with like three of the three of the people over there that were really dope they were solid they were like they supported me and everything but um you know and I always maintained my independent catalog while yeah. I was with them which was like like I said I will always big them up for that because they allowed me to be signed with them right while I still have my whole tune core going on cuz that was non-negotiable when I right. met them cuz okay. I had the leverage like with any label that it was just like I'm not about to have this leverage coming in making 100 grand a month without a label off of, off of my music, right? And I'm going to sign with y'all and give y'all all this shit I've yeah. been doing? Nah, like, I get to keep all this. And anything moving forward, cool. Let's rock out. But um, I think it just got to a point where I just felt like I could handle my own career without their involvement. Mm. And I wanted to do... I wanted to just be not creative control was never an issue, but they weren't doing anything for me that I couldn't do for myself. Mm, and gotcha. that's that's just it in a nutshell. Yeah. And I fuck with like I said, I fuck with a couple people over there and they know who they are, but <laughs> No, I do. Yeah. And they know, but it got to like I signed with them for radio. Gotcha. You know, and I had some I had some radio success over there, but you know, uh, and, and I signed with them for uh, playlisting opportunities, yeah, yeah, shit right. like that. But then I, I, I came to find out, that's why I tell a lot of artists, that at the end of the day, there's Spotify mm -hmm. and there's the artists. Yeah. And sometimes there's this thing in between, which is a label. And all that's happening is that the label is just going and asking them, yo, can you consider Russ for Rap Caviar? Mm. The label can get told no. <laughs> right. Just like you can get told no. Yeah. And so being naive, I was like, nah, once you're with the label, like, you're just in. Right. You're in the door. You're, you're in the, the club. game. Right. And it's like, no, because when I was with the label, they would be like, yeah, it's just, it was either um, the numbers, no, it's not data related, it's editorial, or it is data related and not editorial, but well, it's half and half. Honestly, bro, it's a shit show. We don't know. And I was like, listen. I cannot get on Rap Caviar mm -hmm. myself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I cannot get on. I can get told no by myself. Yeah. I don't need y'all to get told no for me. I can get told no. Yeah. So just a little shit like that and the radio thing, because that was really like my big reason for even partnering was to, to kind of elevate and go to that next level. And, uh, you know, now that I'm financially uh, in, in a really great spot where I can hire my own personnel as far as the radio side, it's like, look. Let me go hire, which I did, hire out my own person, uh, personal radio team. And as far as the playlisting goes, I know that's a shit show anyway. It is. It's yeah. a shit show. Y'all could tell me no as easy as y'all can tell fucking future no. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Like, it just is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not even going to chase after that. And the reality is like, you know, I got 11, 12 platinum songs, whatever the fuck it is now. And it's 19 million. Platinum singles, by the way. R-I-A-A certified. Is that what it is now? Last time I checked. That's not even total <laughs> sold. That's just what's been certified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. So, let's you. So, 19 million. Yeah. And three of them have been on the Billboard 100 chart. And uh, four or five of them have gone to radio. So, you tell me how much any of that shit really matters. I'll right. tell you what really matters is having fans worldwide that connect with your message on a <clears throat> on an applicable self help level right like when you pluck like the human chords and when people live to your shit 
and cry to your shit and be sad to your shit yeah. and be happy. Like when they live to it, <laughs> an algorithm can't fake that. Yeah, you can't fake that. Data can't no, and so quantify people, that. Yeah, and when people are like, I don't believe it. <laughs> Staples Center, I don't believe it. Because yeah. who listens to It's like... Just because you don't listen to it doesn't mean that that's the world. The reality is, bro, is that hits and these artists, a lot of y'all be listening to, the tickets aren't selling like that because there's no foundation of substance. Because when it comes down to it and after the drunk wears off and the party is over, are you really living to some... There's no message in the music. There's no message yeah. in the music. And people can look at some of my hits and be like, well, what's your message? Like, you can look at Best on Earth and be like, what's the message? Best on Earth is just about, you know, one chick and fucking with that. But that's not even the point. The point is that I got a catalog and, and fans around the world that know the catalog and the messages in that shit. There's a reason why I was able to write a self-help book and every chapter was a song title. Yeah. Every right. chapter was a song title of a self-help book. <laughs> Right. You know what I'm saying? Like that makes fucking, sense. It, it all correlates. Yeah, but that's why it resonates, and that's what that's what it's really about, bro. I thought it was kind of intriguing on uh, the the record 2006 when you said my tune core is a top five a label. label. Yeah, 2006 is hard. That's a <laughs> Ma- that's a Maxwell sample. Right. I I hit him direct because we couldn't get a hold of him, and he was with Columbia. Oh, so you hit Maxwell? Yeah. Oh. I I was like, bro, I'm trying to clear this song because like he had reached out on some other shit. I feel like randomly, like a couple years ago. And I was like, bro, I'm trying to clear this. Like, was that like a fuck? DM or something? No, like I have his number. Oh. Because he had reached out like years ago. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't remember what the fuck it was for, but shout out to Maxwell. And uh, so I texted him. I was like, bro, can you clear this? He was like, just listen, I love it. Like, you're great for the culture. <laughs> da, 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 da. He's like, right. clear. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But, um, but I also saw that you tweeted that you said, like, if you're letting a company take a 15% distribution fee in like 2020, you're just... You're owning up to the exploitation. Yeah, you are. Yeah. It's a fact. Well, because uh, that part of record deals is so outdated because it used to be like, well, we need to take at least 15% because we're pressing up all these CDs. Right. There's a lot of physical CDs being shipped out the store. The expenses were crazy. Nowadays, right? I can, right now when we leave this interview, make a song in my basement, press upload on TuneCore for $9.99, and I know there's all these other yeah. avenues, this one's cheaper, That's you're missing the point. That's surface level shit. The beneath the surface shit is, I can upload a song, distribute. Yeah. Distribute is just the old word for upload. <laughs> I can upload a song for less than $10. Right. Y'all want 15% forever? Yeah. Are y'all fucking crazy, crazy for pressing up? Because guess what they're doing on their end? The labels that are taking 15%, guess what they're doing on their end nowadays? Upload. Mm. And that's what they're charging you 15% for. Now, if you go ask a label, they'll talk in circles about, no, there's more to it than that. It's pitching and it's playlist. Y'all don't guarantee playlisting, though. You can't. That's true. Because you, you don't own Spotify. You yeah. don't own the playlist. So you're just guaranteeing that you might get told no yeah. for 15%. So are labels bad, though, Russ? Um, I think... I think labels will be relatively obsolete come 2030, simply because uh, there's a lot of money circulating right now in the music industry. There's a lot of artists that are getting hip to like what's going on. There's a lot of information out there. People are getting smarter. And I just think that at the end of the day, you got to look, what's the value of a label? You could say the value of a label is uh, playlisting, but that's debunked. They can mm-hmm. get told no. That's a fact. You can say it's radio. I thought that too, but radio is really just, it comes down to like one person at rhythm radio, one person at urban radio, one person at pop radio. Mm-hmm. And then it's money and you're yeah. paying. And if you have the money to fund your song, you're good. So that's debunked. Then you could say, oh, well, it's media and PR and Grammys and shit like that. You know what? That might be the only bit of validity Mm. where because you're with a label they just have your perception on oh never mind because i'm me and i was with the label and i was destroyed in the media so that shit didn't fucking work either (laughs) (laughs) but there was a time you talked about in live from the villa 2006 you went to epic records you sat in sycamore Sycamore seat seat. well what the hell were you doing at epic records i was meeting with labels oh okay that was when i was doing my like label run of meeting with epic and republic and 
I mean, back then, bro, I apologize to anyone <laughs> who, like, met me from fucking 2016 to, like, 2018. Just because I had, like, I was on 15, bro, and mm. I was, and I understand that if you only met me once, I might have I came off wild, arrogant, mm. and what, but I forgive myself because back then, people don't understand the level of work I had to put in based off of not having any connections, despite yeah. of what all this shit is about. I didn't come into it with a popping manager who knew everyone. Yeah. I didn't come into it with anything, bro. I came into it just with music and fans, and that's it. So when I was getting certain looks, it took me longer to get on. You know what I'm saying? And so when I was, like, when I was moving around in the industry, I did kind of have this, like, fuck you. Yeah, it's type just, of just like a chip on your shoulder. I had a crazy chip on my shoulder, but that same energy and that same bravado and same sort of approach that kind of might, might have rubbed people the wrong way is the exact same thing that got me on. Mm. I needed to have that to even overcome the obstacles of self doubt. Yeah. So the same shit that got me on is the same shit that a lot of people might have hated on. Like, why is he so. Why is he fuck with himself so much? And why is it coming off air? Bro, because I had to hype myself up. I had to go through so, so many failures to mm. get here, you know? So, um, but yeah, the Sycamore shit was just like, it was a fucking label meeting at Epic. Yeah. And I think we were, we met him in the lobby and then we walked, or we were there early. Why do I feel like we were there early? Like before anyone? This is during the LA Reed era, right? Yeah. Okay. And so we walk into the Epic office. We were there early. That's what it was. Like an intern or something brought us into the office like, oh, they'll be in in a minute. I think that's what it was. And I was like, well, I'm going to just sit here. <laughs> <laughs> it was Sycamore seats. And Sycamore now currently is the a and &R. Yeah, and he walks and, in. And he's like, no, 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 you can, yeah, you can sit there. Yeah. But Sycamore was hella cool. But like I said, I apologize for anyone I rubbed the wrong way. But at the same time, I mean, that's the energy it took to get on. And it's, and it's taken a little bit to kind of, for lack of a better word, unlearn mm -hmm. that energy and, and, and kind of settle in and take my coat off and realize that I'm here. But if you haven't been through it, you don't get it. So don't yeah. speak on it and shut the fuck up because yeah. you don't even know what it's like to, to try to go against the odds. Absolutely. You feel me? So shut up. Speaking about energy, man, like yeah. that's what you're bringing right now. The string of releases, mm -hmm. one in particular, uh, the Take You Back record with Kalani. Yeah. It's, it's, it's become a monster on its own. Yeah. Why do you think she was the right voice for the record and how did that come about? I've been trying to work with her for so long. Is that right? Man. Yeah, like I wanted her on a Ain't Nobody Taking My Baby. Oh, wow. Yeah, which it just like, I'm antsy, so if it takes a little too long, I'll just do it and drop it. So that was that was back then. It just wasn't the right timing. And then... Um, that we've just stayed in contact over the years. Like I've always just been a super fan of hers. I mm. think she's like, I think she just has it. You yeah. know, like her voice is insane. Her tone is insane. Her look is insane. She's just ill. You know, and I like that with this new album, people started to kind of like really give her her flowers. But yeah. I don't know. I heard that song. I was like, not heard. I mean, I made it. And I was like, I got to get Kehlani on this. So I, I texted to her and she was like, oh my God, I love this. And she sent it. Right. And I was like, wow. Same day? Nah, but oh. it was like, it was a couple, was it same day? I feel like it was the next night type of shit. It was, it was mad fast. <laughs> I was like, damn. Right. Oh no, I remember, I don't know how long she turned it around, but I remember when she FaceTimed me and she was like, yo, I'm in the studio right now. I'm about to cut this. And, and like, it was like 45 minutes after that. Mm. She sent the whole shit. I was like, you're fucking insane. Well, like, you're known for calling your shot before it even goes in. Did you know that it was going to become this big record? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, that's like, come on, bro. Me and Kehlani in a bed of flowers. <laughs> singing over shot that acoustic during the guitar. Pandemic? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and that's the beautiful thing, man, is just being independent and I'm funding everything out of my pocket. That was a $160,000 video, you wow. feel me? Out of pocket, which like, I love shit like that. I love being like, nah, you know what? This is what I'm dumping money into. Mm. Cause that was the thing with the label, like, you might want to go over here and work this song, but they might be like, nah, our attention's on this right now. Right. We're not gonna work this. And it's like, man, I like being able to just shoot a $40,000, $50,000 video to a song I had called Why? that I dropped in the little flood. Yeah. Just some random ass song, but I just felt like doing that idea. And I'm like, you know what? I got the money. 
I just want to get the idea out. My whole thing is like, let me get as many ideas out as possible. So the Kehlani shit was just the same thing. I was like, man, like, let's just go crazy and shoot a video to it and drop it and then just keep it pushing. Like, my, my, my songs, I, I've learned and like, this is what I respect about my fans the most is that they keep listening, you yeah. know, like... I don't have those, unless Rihanna posts it, but I don't have those <laughs> songs that, like, right when they drop, it's just like, oh. Yeah. You know what I'm it's saying? It's like slow burns almost. Yeah, because my fans are really here. So I have those songs where in a year's time, like, oh, then it's going crazy. Like, Psycho Part 2, for example, mm-hmm. came out 2016, right? TuneCore, not through any label, didn't get worked, nothing. Uh, in this year, it's done 115 million streams, 150 million streams. <laughs> It's my number one song in 2020, is Psycho Part 2. That's crazy. No one talks about it. As far as like industry, whatever. And, and I'm not surprised, but I'm just like, just for context, just for the artists and people out there, Psycho Part 2 is my biggest song in 2020. Not Best on Earth, not Losing wow. Control, not What They Want, none of that shit. Psycho Part 2. Why do you think like the song, like the one with you and Kalani is connecting so well? Um, it's, a, it's a harsh truth that everyone that everyone has probably been through that no one wants to keep it real but I feel like I'm I feel like I'm good at that. I feel like I'm good at being vulnerable. Yeah. And 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 owning up to doing things that y'all do too that maybe you don't want to talk about like no one wants to really admit that they'll take you back after you yeah. fucked up. Yeah. But you know you, <laughs> you are like you, like we all know you've done it. So that's why it's like that's what that shit was about. Like you yeah. know what? Yeah, you fucked up, I fucked up. But like take me back, I'll take you back yeah. type of shit. And I just think I don't know, man. It's just, it's just like I said, it's everyday life music. That's just real life shit that's going on. I saw on Twitter that she said she wanted to do a collab album, and you liked it. Yeah, well, because, like, we've, that- we've talked. I don't want to even put her on blast, but, like, <laughs> she knows, like, we've talked about that yeah. before. Like, because she'll just randomly text me, like, in the past. She hasn't done it in a while, but she would randomly text me, like, yo, let's make a three-song thing. Just like, fuck it. I'm like, come on, I'm ready. Like, let's do it. But, so that's just a conversation. That's a text. Yeah, she knows I'm always down for that. We were just in the studio too, like a month or a month, month and a half ago, some shit. We did some other shit, man. She's like, I really like seeing people work in real time too. Yeah. To like almost see how real it is. And 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 that girl's crazy, man. Yeah, like we she's dope. like I walked in with some like the beat and I had my verse on it and the hook was done. And just to like see her write some crazy shit and record it and be done on like 30 minutes some shit i was like man <laughs> she's a beast man yeah i'm like you're different yeah. now, i know you work well with them because yeah. you worked this year with kiana lede queen yeah. naja bia what is it about you and having the chemistry with these female singers um i think i'm just i'm really like genuinely interested in what women have to say and just like offer mm. <laughs> you know yeah. it's in the musical space and life in, in life but um it's just like, you can't get, uh, I can sing as many hooks as I want, but it'll never feel the same as a Kiana Lede hook or yeah. just any woman's hook. Like, you just, it's an energy too, having a female on the song. Like, it's just the whole opposite perspective, you know? But uh, I think with me, I think in the music, you can tell that, you can tell I'm interested in what y'all's perspective yeah. is and, and what, y'all have to say and I'm and I'm trying to like figure y'all out and trying to empathize so you could tell I'm like genuinely interested because I am I always to me I don't know I've just been like that I've just always found it more interesting to hear what a woman has to say about my music than a than a guy yeah. right I've just always been like that just because it's like I'm a guy <laughs> I know how I think about you know my music. Think, right. I know how we all feel generally. Yeah. I want to hear how y'all feel. Yeah. I know how I feel. <laughs> you know how I feel? I feel like you should do a Kalani collaboration album because she posted it on Twitter that she yes. wants to do a collab album and you like the tweet. I did like so it. So what does that mean, Russ? Are we gonna get a Kalani Russ? I was trying to I was trying to evoke a text. <laughs> 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 nah, like me and her have talked about that before. Yeah. I'm so down. She knows that. Like we we got another song in the stash too. Uh yeah, man, I love working with women just because, like I said, it's sometimes I feel like women are uh, the answer to a lot of my questions in my music. Right. Like, I'll be making these songs like, why? Yeah. Right? Like, I make a song called Why, 
a woman could tell you why. Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> you like, know what I mean, I feel like you're really in touch with your feminine side, like, especially yes. this year. It seems like the Lucy's that you drop, yeah, are uh, focused heavily on relationships and love yeah. loss, like, why. Yeah. One more chance. I mm -hmm. thought you got me. Mm -hmm. Like, are those based off of personal experiences? Yeah, unfortunately they are. <laughs> based off of personal experiences. But, yeah, I'm really in touch with that side, man. I think men steer away from that and shy away from that. From what, for whatever reasons, upbringing, environment, you know, it was a weakness to a lot of men, depending on where you're from and shit. So, I get it. But, I don't know. I've just always, like, I've always just kept it real with myself yeah. and how I'm feeling and... I gotta make music that reflects my soul and my spirit. And so I, you know, those are therapy sessions for me. And yeah. so I gotta ask those questions, why? Yeah. And I gotta plead one more chance. <laughs> and, Damn, I thought you got me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I gotta do that. And like I said, I don't, I'm not really, I'm interested in hearing men's perspective on it. Like, I'll ask my friends, like, yo, I'll give them the real life situation. Like, yo, what do you think I should do? Da 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 da. But, I'm really curious about what the woman feels like because, yeah. like, they just think entirely different a lot of the times, and I'm just, and it's just refreshing, man. Like it's just, like I said, I've always just been really genuinely interested in what women have to say on shit. Yeah. You know, I got a younger sister who I love and respect, and my mom I love and respect and super close with. So like, I'm just genuinely interested on the perspectives of women, and I don't think, um, and I mean, I do think that me putting that in the music has been natural, and it's obviously yielded a lot of like female fans yeah. because they feel like even if I don't understand y'all, y'all probably feel like I hear you. It's like you're trying. Well, I you're hear you. Yeah. That's why like I've tried to stop saying I feel you to people mm. too. <laughs> you know, like I like to, and I'm sure like this will go out and some girl will be like, look, he just told me. He feels. <laughs> but it's like I've tried to just start saying I hear you Yeah. because it's like I feel like that's more honest and more respectful saying i feel you is like no you, it's impossible How? Well, so one record that i feel the most is sorry you said on twitter that mm. it was one of your favorite songs that yeah. you ever put out is really some spiritual shit i just want to know what sets that apart from all the records that you put out it's so solid yeah it's one of those songs that just wrote itself you mm. know like i hear beats sometimes and that was ill mind and i hear beats sometimes where I couldn't imagine this beat being any other song but this. Like, I couldn't imagine you talking about anything else but what I wrote about. Mm -hmm. You know, like, so the, the, you hear the beat and it says sorry. Yeah. Like, you got to write about, you know what I'm saying? Like, was that inspired by real life events as well? Yeah, that was literally me saying sorry mm -hmm. <laughs> to, like, the person I was uh, dealing with. Um, Does she know that? Yeah, every girl that I've written a song about <laughs> knows that they're about them because I send them oh, wow. to them. I'm like, yeah. this, but obviously all of them would be like, oh, I, how, how many of you sent this to and said that? Yeah. Only four. No, I'm <laughs> nah, but it's like, it's real. Like, they're really about real people. Um, but that Sorry song gets a little mm -hmm. rough when, like, that's the 10th version of Sorry I've said. It's yeah. like, no, but just the sonics of that and the, and the marriage between the music, the melody, and the content, that's like, to me, is is when you strike gold for me in a studio when it's like I hear a beat and I feel like I, I come up with the perfect concept and the perfect melody. Yeah. It's like, it's like whatever this song does on a metric level, yeah. cool. But I know this was the best I could do. This, yeah. There's some songs where I'm like, this is really hard, but like, I wouldn't be surprised if you gave it to someone else and they came up with something iller. Mm. You know, a, a more precise concept for the beat, but man, those ones like that where I'm like, I don't care what it does. Yeah. Numbers wise, like that shit was perfect. It impacts. Yeah. But those type of songs, like like I said, man, I'm just really big on making everyday life music because that's what we're doing out here. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's like when I li listen to those kind of records, I'm like, he gets it. Russ gets it. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know what you're tapping into. You're like, you've been talking to that girl. <laughs> <laughs> right, she it's tell relatable. You? It's yeah. relatable to everyone that's going through like a relationship. Yeah, and I'm okay with being damn near the fucking... Almost... You know what sometimes I feel like, bro? What's that? I feel like uh, reflecting on my career and myself, which like quarantine has allowed me to do a lot of, I feel like uh, at times I'm like an emotional 
martyr and not even in like a narcissistic sense like don't worry everyone i got us like yeah. not like that but just where i know it's better for me to go through shit and that's like it's a um it's a weird balance to kind of come to terms with to know that the more fucked up shit i go through the better music i make the more fans i get mm. but it all stems from how much fucked up shit can you go through before right. it breaks you Oh, and then if it breaks you, can you write a song about that so we can get that too? Because that'll yeah. be really great. It's transferable in some ways. Yeah, and it's like, I wish I was, I'm not going to say I wish, but there's people who are able to write songs about other people's fucked upness and it do really well. But I've just always, I don't know, I got to talk about my shit and yeah. get through it. So there's times where I'm like, fuck, man, like as much as I want peace of mind, I feel like my music would be trash if I had peace of mind. Wow. Because what the fuck would I talk about? Right. But I guess that's the elevation where, because someone could answer that, like, and this is me answering myself. Well, that's when you talk about shit that's not about you, you fucking ego maniac. <laughs> like, talk about the world. But it's yeah. like, how can I talk about the world if that's not what I'm living, if that topic over there isn't my everyday life? I don't want to, like, try and talk <clears throat> about shit that I'm not wildly educated on i'm yeah. super educated on myself and what i go through so i can talk about that i can't fake the funk and be a hero for you know germany <laughs> yeah if i don't know what's going on over there right and i'm not really living that every day you know what i'm saying so i i just talk about my shit and it just like it feels like that though where i've noticed like the songs that Majority of the songs that do really well for me are the ones where I was like going through the most. Yeah. You know? Right. Mine is Best on Earth, but that was a fucking. I mean, that was a monster. Yeah, that was like Rihanna. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> like, that was Rihanna. Right. If Rihanna doesn't post that, what does that song do? <laughs> Maybe it still goes crazy. It's, it, it, Who we, knows? We never know. You never know. And that's why it's a blessing because you know what? You gotta just, you gotta just fucking. What, I have, what I've had to say to myself is. If it wasn't that, it was gonna be something else that just fucking, that got the pat on the back from someone, the cosign that just made yeah. it go nuts. And it's like, that's really to me was just, it was a sign of like, you're in the right direction, keep going. Yeah. Like I look at little shit like that and I'm like, man, sometimes shit like that is just enough for you to make it to the next release. Absolutely. Cause people don't know what artists are dealing with. People don't know what, I'm, what I'd be going through mentally cause I disguise it well. Uh, cause I'm like a little bit ashamed to, uh, be honest about nah I be getting depressed a lot mm -hmm. and hella anxiety and how come my anxiety and confidence is worse when yeah. I got on and did it like what the fuck is going on all this shit and I disguise it well but so people don't know that you know small wins for me that might be big wins for y'all but wins wins in general for me like they really mean more to me now because of the mental headspace I, the, I've been in. Like, they really get me to the next fucking right. couple months. Well, artists are complex individuals, but, yeah. you know, you talk about those pat on the backs. I got to give you a pat on your back. So in addition to the relationship raps, yeah. you be getting these bars off, man. Thank you. Like, Thank you. I felt like you really put people on notice with the Live from the Villa freestyle. Yeah. You know, and then afterward, you, you, you doubled down on the congrats freestyle yeah like congrats freestyle was congrats hard, freestyle man. was crazy that was one of my favorite that's one of those things i'm talking about where it's just like the pocket where the beat's perfect and what the shit is about congrats just i don't know just like that was a good one so yeah. i appreciate it you said there was a line that you said on congrats freestyle that there's a a lot of a lot of people that don't listen to nipsey and it shows, it shows. like what are some things that you take from nipsey that people aren't applying ownership today? ownership ownership like to me Nipsey dies in vain if you don't own your masters. Mm. You feel me? Nipsey dies in vain if you're not a boss. Yeah. Like, the way you honor Nipsey is by being a boss and by owning your shit yeah. and by helping your people out. That's the way you honor Nipsey. Like, the way you honor Kobe is by going hard every day and not making excuses and fucking yeah. tapping into your greatness. And I might be speaking out of turn and like, well, what do you know about that? Cool. Then maybe I am, but... That's how I honor them. You feel me? That's why I got, I went and got the number eight tatted on me uh, the other day. And I got Nipsey tatted on me. And I got number eight tatted on me and not 24 because uh, I just relate to that being 
fresh in the league and headhunting and trying to prove yourself, you know? Yeah. And I just feel like with Nipsey, it's like, man, I was lucky to find out about Nipsey 2010 when he dropped Marathon in December. Yeah. It was like around this time, 10 years ago. I was a freshman in college and it's like, leaving that type of a mentality behind the marathon and just, yeah. you honor him by running your marathon. Yeah. Like that's how you honor, you don't honor him by like, yeah, I'll be listening to Nipsey like casually. Like, I don't even care if you listen to him every day, but if you're not applying the, the message, you're not right. honoring him. You don't listen to Nipsey. You hear Nipsey. I didn't say y'all don't hear Nipsey. Because you can listen to Nipsey every day. You can hear his music every day. But are you listening to him? Yeah. A lot of y'all don't. And it shows. <laughs> <laughs> I think what's really impressive at the end mm -hmm. is that you gave you talk about this transaction of the rappers and just giving up their, their, their own equity to someone else. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because you, you lack foresight. That's why I said uh, you ain't looking past your nose. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like... You just want the check right now. Yeah. You haven't thought about in 10 years when this check runs out, wouldn't you still want to be making money? <laughs> right. Yeah. But it's, you know, even at the end of Congrats Freestyle, I thought it was really like a powerful thing when I said the, um, yeah, I rap about tickets, plaques, and ownership, sue me. Yeah. Y'all rap about Montclair and Gucci, Gucci on your body. So how come I'm the only one that gets called cocky? <laughs> oh, I said, nah, I said it. Yeah, I brag about tickets, yeah. plaques, and ownership, Sumi. Y'all brag about Montclair and Gucci on your body. So how come I'm the only one who gets called cocky? Why do you think that is? <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. Right. But it's like, it's really interesting when you think about it. Like, rap isn't that's braggadocious. Why, that's why, as if rap isn't braggadocious, yeah. at least what I brag about can get you bags instead of handing over cash to someone racist who just uses y'all for black promotion. Right. And then it's like, then it's the sarcasm of, way to stick it to the man. Yeah. You really showed him by putting cash That's in his hand. hand. Yeah. Walked out the store, then you posted on the gram, now your fans are his fans. The it's cycle like, repeats, peace, congrats. congrats. Yeah, that was it's really like, dope. It's like, how am I, like, I'm not going to say I'm not cocky, but why is that the narrative on me when everyone in rap brags? That's yeah. the context of this shit. But now, so now that we're under the... Now that we're on the same page that everyone in rap brags, now let's look at what we brag about. Mm. That's why I like when Jay-Z's like, I brag different. <laughs> like, because right. I do. It's like, I'm bragging about shit that can get y'all long-term money. And I brag about ownership. Y'all brag about giving white people who hate black people money. Right. And I don't understand how that doesn't get the same rap as like, you're cocky as fuck. Like, I, fine, I'm cocky as hell, but you're not. Yeah. Yeah, we're all cocky. We rap. But now let's look at what we brag about. Yeah. And it's like, what I brag about versus what majority of rap brags about, which one do you think is detrimental to people? And right. which one do you think uplifts and empowers? Right. So, I don't know, man. That shit to me, like, it bothers me just because, like, I feel like the media paints this narrative of, of me of, like, I'm some terrible guy who... I don't know, just like this piece of shit guy. And I'm just like, yeah. I'm like, look, am I a little bit more arrogant than most? Sure. Uh, you know, do I have like That's nothing a, wrong with obnoxious that, interviews sometimes? Sure. But like my message though yeah. and my intention, nah, man, it's some of the most positive, productive shit that could be coming through a mainstream vessel. It seems like your heart is in the right place. Yeah. Yeah. When a lot of these people's shit isn't. Yeah. And y'all, I don't see y'all giving them flack. Yeah. But I've been listening to you because after the Congrats Freestyle, yeah. you dropped this Chomp EP. Now, you said that the Guess What performance was the best rap performance that you ever done. Yeah. But then you came up back with Chomp. Right. Like, why was now the right time to release that project? It, it was just like a, a gut thing. I had been flirting with the idea of doing Chomp, I think, around like last December, like December 2019. Um, just cause I could like kind of feel, cause I'm in tune with like the perception and shit. Um, and I was in tune with the idea that people really, a lot of people don't know that I can rap. Yeah. Like point blank period. Yeah. My fans know because I got a, I got a bunch of congrats freestyles in my catalog. Mm. Like my debut album starts off and ends with two, three minutes yeah. of raps, only raps. You know what I'm saying? So like my fans know what's up, but I could tell like. The media and just like the the culture at whole didn't really like know like that because i never really put it on blast right 
I was gonna ask, oh, do you feel like you get the respect or do you no. get overlooked for your lyrical abilities? I super overlooked. Mm. I rap better than ninety nine percent of rappers who are at my level. Yeah. As far as like visibility. Don't start naming me your best friend next door <laughs> who's got 20,000 followers, you yeah. feel me? I'm talking about people at my level of people visibility, in yeah. people in the game. I rap better than 99% of them, and that's how I should feel. Yeah. That's how I should feel. But I feel like Chomp was, uh, it was just that time where I wanted to really make it clear that I do this too, and I love the style of rap. And I knew one song wasn't going to be able to move the needle. Uh, like, because I dropped live from the Villa Freestyle, and it yeah. came and went, because it was one song. And if you only do something one time, it's not enough to make us, it's not enough to convince us like, oh, man, you really be rapping. But I feel like the live from the Villa Freestyle like perked the ears. It perked the ears, but then the second next week rolled around, I dropped Give Up, mm -hmm. or whatever the fuck it was after that. It's like, oh, okay, never mind. Yeah. Right? Same with Congrats Freestyle. Like, Congrats Freestyle. That, I think that caught the interest. That caught the interest. Like, damn, Russ really be rapping. Okay. Because you really saw, like, it was the format of the, of the shit. It was like a, a freestyle on the yeah, whole thing. Yeah, like, it felt like a radio freestyle. It was freestyle. raw, yeah. It, it was like, like basic training for rappers. Right. So it was like, damn, okay, he's nice. But once again, that, it's not enough to move the needle. So I knew that, like, that congrats freestyle was just a rollout for Chomp. But I knew if I did this shit fucking five times in mm. a row and there's no melody like that, like there's like there's hooks, but it's not even hooks. Like there's one hook on line em up, but I was like, man, if and I who wants what who wants what? Yeah, but yeah, it wasn't actually. like a melody hook, but okay. but I was like, man, let me assemble just the fucking Avengers for this <laughs> shit. Let me go hit up. DJ Premier, Ninth Wonder, Alchemist. So this is like your wish list of producers? It was. As far as if with? I wanted to make that style of shit, I was like, I don't want to leave anything up to chance almost. I didn't want to I didn't want to make a all rap project and me produce the whole thing and me do it all myself because I knew people outside of my fan base wouldn't be interested. I was like, nah, you know what? I'm going to go fuck with people who y'all fuck with and show y'all that I can keep up. Right. It felt like you wanted to silence your critics on this project. Yeah, I did. I really did. In that rap space, I did because I know people don't look at me in that vein yeah. and, and they don't think that I can really rap like that. And I knew in order to get the attention I wanted, I had to go bring in y'all's favorite artists and y'all's favorite producers. Yeah. And not even just y'all's favorite artists. I knew I had to bring in y'all's favorite rappers and y'all's favorite producers. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, all right, cool. And I always fucked with all these people anyway, but I was right. like, I know if I assemble this, if I pull this shit off, it's a rap. Like, I knew, like, I knew I wanted to get a ninth one to beat with Benny and Black Thought. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I knew I wanted Absol on some shit. I knew I wanted Alchemist beats, DJ Premier beats. So, I assembled kind of this, like, superstar underground cast, yeah. right? And I, like, and it was just people that I genuinely fucked with and was hoping that they would fuck with me, too. Because, mm. like... I didn't. I had never talked to Absol before this project. Wow! Really? No, I had never. Uh, I had never talked to Alchemist before this project. I had never talked to Busta Rhymes before this project. Um, but so, it all kind of. I'll give you the whole timeline. It all kind of came together nicely. So, after guess what dropped. Ninth Wonder either DM'd me or commented on the shit, like, mm. this is crazy. Right. And I remember DMing him instantly, like, yo, I would love to do some shit. So guess what kind of, like, set the tone for everything For Ninth Wonder. Right, okay. Because Ninth Wonder was like, I remember him hit me, like, we can do some shit if you're going to rap like how you did on Guess What. Mm. I was like, say less. So he sent me some shit. And then somewhere along, somewhere at the beginning of this year, I randomly just posted, uh my second Funk Flex freestyle. And Black Thought DM me. Wow. And he was like, yo, you're dead nice. Not a lot of people can go up to Flex and kill shit. I'm like, right. what? I'm like, all right. Like, I know I'm cool with Benny already. Yeah. So I was like, all right. Song one right here, I got it. I'm going to make this shit happen. So I, I knew I had that one in the bag. I had Ninth Wonder, mm -hmm. me, uh, Benny, and Black Thought. Alchemist, um... Alchemist had followed me or I met him back. I don't know, some shit, but that came together nice. Oh, we want to bust the rhymes on the Alchemist shit, on Line Em Up, right? Mm. I didn't know bust the rhymes. I sent him a fucking wild DM. Right. Like, just like, who knows if he even sees yeah. this, whatever. 
a week goes by, he doesn't see the shit. I'm just like, whatever. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, man, let me unsend this shit. Yeah. I'm like, I can't be out here looking crazy. <laughs> I just had one of those moments. Shoot a shoot. Yeah, and I like, I should have left it, but like, I got like insecure, and I was like, let me delete, <laughs> let me unsend it. Yeah. Bro, swear to God, he call, he sends me a DM, like the next day after me unsending it, and I could tell he didn't see the shit. Maybe so, I don't know, mm-hmm. from his shit. But he sends me a DM like, "Yo, Peace King would love to talk." Da 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 da. He calls me. Completely unrelated about anything that I was talking about. That's how I know he didn't see it. Just asking for advice. Wow. Independent. And like being an indie artist and, you know, because he's with Empire right. and shit. And he was just giving me like, you know, his whole situation and asking me for advice. And I'm like, I got Busta Rhymes on the phone. I said, like, this is crazy. It's crazy, right. And so I was like, bro, actually, I got some like crazy shit for you to do. He was like, absolutely. So I sent him the Alchemist shit. And he cut it. Like, all these songs, the ninth one, the Alchemist one, like, I had my verses on them. You know what I'm saying? That I had sent back to the producers that they were like, this is crazy. So that was the Alchemist shit. Ab Soul one. That's why I want to know. Where the hell did you find Ab Soul? Ab Soul. So Punch has been a supporter of mine for a minute, right? Shout out to Punch. So me and Punch have always kind of gone back and forth and just stayed in touch. And I hit Punch, and I was like, man, I got something crazy for Ab Soul. And he was like, send it through. So I sent it. Um, and then he played it for Ab, and so me and Ab Soul connected on Twitter, mm. and then we're talking. He sent the verse back. Uh, DJ Premier, we had already connected with because he, I think his manager is Budden's manager too, right? Joe Budden's manager, Ian. Yeah, Ian, yeah. yeah. So like we, Ian and Schultz. I had met DJ Premier at some like shit years ago. Kith, Kith, is that what she said? I met him at Kith. Fashion show. Oh, shit. Oh, that's right. And he was out back and we met. Yeah, okay. So that was that was the app soul shit. So yeah, so I'm aligning all these things for Chomp. And then the last the last song I made for Chomp was Stockholm Syndrome. Oh, it's crazy. So Stockholm Syndrome, it was produced by me, so I had to be. Um, and I knew, like, the project was solid, right? I had app soul. I had Black Thought, Benny, I had Busta, I had the premiere song done, I had Ninth, I had Alchemist. I was like, man, but I need like, cause I, I'm aware of who the spitters are, yeah. right? I was like, I need one with Royce Crooked and Eminem. Mm. That's like shooting from half court, man. So I'll give you the whole shit and shout out to this fan, right? So I've met Royce before when I met Eminem. I've never met Crooked. Okay. Um, but I've met Royce, and I've talked with Royce before. This fan, Candace Brown. Shout out to Candace. I believe is her name on Twitter, right? Royce tweeted, oh no, Crooked tweeted something like, posse cuts don't exist anymore mm. type of shit, right? And I was like, I was like, I was like, nah, I got one with Ben. I don't think I said I got one with Benny and Black Thought. But I said, I think I, I was like, I got a crazy one in the raps. Carl Cherry knew about Momentum. Okay. So Carl, I think he texted the group chat that we're in. Right. And he was like, three people, three verses in the posse cut. Yeah, three yeah, people, yeah. right? And I was like, how's it not a posse cut? It's three people. Like, what? all right, I get it. Four people is a posse cut. Okay, cool. So I responded to that tweet of Crooked being like, yo, no one really makes posse cut records anymore. Some shit like that. The Candace fan tweets back saying, Yo, a you crooked and Royce song would be crazy. And 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 I think either I said or Royce said first, like I'm down. Yeah. And then Roy said, I'm down. And Crooked was like, I'm down. Wow. I was like, wow, this this fan just ain't all the shit out of this <laughs> one. <laughs> and I was like, right. yo, this is crazy. So I hit Crooked um and Royce on the text, because yeah. then we exchanged information. And I hit them and I sent the beat. Uh, they were both down, right? Mm. Crooked sent his verse back first and he went ballistic. He went nuts on that drink. He went ballistic to the point that Royce FaceTimed me and he was like, bruh, he was like, y'all just put this shit in such a body bag that I don't even feel like y'all need another verse. Mm. Just cause like it was already so slaughtered. And he was like, send me some other shit or whatever. You got anything else? And I didn't have anything else. I was oh. like, fuck. So I'm hitting Crooked and I'm like, 
Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot for the moon. <laughs> yeah, because I'm like, bro, if I pop out with the me, Crooked, Eminem shit. It's going to go crazy. Nutty. And I felt like that beat was perfect for M, but he was like, he's recording his, he's recording an album right now or some shit. But I'm going to ask him. Um, didn't have, he said he fucks with it, but like didn't want to, he was busy. Maybe was he didn't busy, fuck with yeah. it. I don't know. Maybe that was like the nice thing to say. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows what that was the fuck. But Eminem's the ghost. So I wasn't really expecting that to happen. Right. I'm going to shoot for it. But so that's what it was. So it was just me and Crooked. Um, but yeah, so Chomp, went, the thing with Chomp, I'm going to make it. No, nah, I don't even want to say. I no, wait, say. you got to say it. Nah, it's the end of the year. It. I don't want to say Is there a Chomp 2 or something coming? What's I'm, going on? I'm interested in making Chomp this random series where, like, they just drop out of nowhere. But when you see Chomp and the brand Chomp, you know it's just raps. It's a lyrical exercise. That's it. It's yeah. just like, yo, play the beat for eight minutes and rap with, yeah. with four people who can, like, like, I want to do something with, you know, I was talking with Static Selector. I'm like, man, it would be cool if fucking put me Wale and Big Sean on a static selected mm. beat and everyone rap for two minutes. Put put me, Freddie, and Conway that on a wow. on a fucking, you know, on a whoever beat. Doesn't matter. On a fucking on a like Pete Rock beat. You oh, know what I'm saying? Nice. Or like a like a Knots beat or or Crisis or a Cardiac. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just I just wanna like go I wanna keep that uh I like that I've created this thing that if you're a fan of that type of shit I got, I got it for you. And I can always kind of hand that off. Right. And but, it's cool. Cause. But I know you're a fan of Ab Soul. And I know you yeah, said it was a man. dream come true for you to collaborate with him. Never, I saw that you saw, you posted on, uh, on Twitter some 2011 tw- bro, tweets Ab from Ab Soul. Soul. No, like, listen, Ab Soul taught me a really valuable lesson in the studio with him. Because, like, I'm really big on giving people their flowers and yeah. shit. And he was like, man, he was like, you're, he was like, you're dope love the shit like you got to give people your flower their flowers he said but just make sure that you don't give them too much flowers to the point that they like little bro you it was a valuable lesson man just to like it was dope because i'm really big on like bigging up people and yeah. giving them their flowers but it was it was a cool perspective to hear like yeah like give them the flowers but he said like throw them on the table and walk away mm. which i thought was really like valuable and really interesting but yeah man absolutely knows and like Ali and just TD in general, like, I was, since 2011, I was trying to get Beast to Absol. Yeah, I saw the tweets. I was like, yo, you were trying to connect with him nine years ago. Yeah, I'm definitely one of those people like, y'all just started listening to Kendrick and Absol. <laughs> yeah, because we were 2010, like, yeah. 2010, 2011, March 2011, when Kendrick Lamar was at the Masquerade, hell, Masquerade, the old Masquerade, mm. and we brought, you know, we pulled up. We brought, like, weed for, like, Schoolboy Q or some shit. And <laughs> when Schoolboy Q was, like, the hype man or yeah. something like that. You know what I mean? Like, so I've been trying to get Beast to Absol. So the fact that not only was I able to rap with Absol, which was a dream come true, but it happened to be over one of my beats was, man, I'll never forget where I was when I when he sent the verse back. I was at the London, which I'll never say there again. I can't believe y'all made a song about that. It's such a <laughs> fucking, it's not a good hotel. <laughs> The hotel, like, I'm like, I'm like, yo, all right, the London. Like, let's see what this is about. Like, it's about to be dumb fly. I'm staying in the most expensive room there. This shit is garbage, bro. Oh, my gosh. That that shit was like, I was like, bro, (laughs) this is what y'all, this was song worthy? Oh, man. Nah, like, (laughs) I got to take y'all somewhere because this isn't it, bro. Right. Right. But um, I was at the London and I got the verse sent back. And it was so hard, bro. Everyone, when they sent their verses back, because for Chomp, I recorded all my verses first and I sent the songs out. Yeah. So everyone, like, here's the thing that people need to understand, right? Because I saw a lot of this, like, online, like, okay, but you got washed by everyone. First of all, I don't think I did. Second yeah, of all, that's not true. second of all, second of all, if you think I did, I'm supposed to, though. Mm. I'm supposed to. Everyone I rapped with has been rapping for 10 years longer than me. Some some 20. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm not supposed to be able to keep up with Black Thought. But I think you got overshot. I think I don't you held think, your own. I think I went fucking crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I like the fact, I take it the reverse way. I like the fact that I know, because I had the conversations with these people. I like the fact that they all heard my verse first and they came accordingly because of it. Mm. If I would have said, if my verse would have been a bullshit little 16, 
prob- they probably wouldn't have even done it first of all. Right. But because I came so crazy on everything, and they all hit me like when I hit them back, they were like, "Nah, I had to come that crazy because you went nuts." Like yeah. Crooked said that, Ab Soul said like Benny, Black Thought, like I had to. They were all like, "I had to go that crazy." Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like Busta went longer than I did because of how crazy I went. He was like, "I had to do. I had to go longer than you because yeah. you went crazy." So to me, that was the biggest compliment of all, man, was just the fact that. I feel like I helped in bringing out the best yeah. in all of them because I feel like I'm biased because it's on my shit, but I feel like that's the best Absol for us I've heard in a long time. I mean, you can't even find Absol, so to get yeah. any Absol is always a treat, but to double down on that, you yeah. broke the internet with the basement freestyle video. Oh, yeah. For so like, that was... Was that your idea? Edgar Estevez, who my fans know, like, we've done fucking 30 three videos some shit like that he's sitting at the couch right now right. filming this interview uh that was his idea and i wasn't sold on it at first really why not because i felt like we needed to go more music video mm. right and he and so i was like you know what let me just send the idea to absol and absol fucked with it heavy then absol was like cool this is crazy if you can get big tigger though this is a wrap yeah because originally the idea was just Rap City, right? Like the setting. And I was like, fuck, okay, we know Big Tigger because I did an interview with him. Mm-hmm. So I was like, cool, let's get Big Tigger. So we got Big Tigger and it was a rap and it was a genius call. But that's where it's like, I don't know, a lot of people don't see that side of me where I'm very open to collaboration and very open to other people's ideas. And, and yo, what do you think is cool? What do you think is dope? Like, I'm confident in my shit, but like, I fuck with you and your taste. What do you right. think is dope? So I was just ill, man. That was we brought back the basement for that. People thought thing. that was like really. Yeah, <laughs> they were like, "Damn, they brought back they the, basement the basement." It was really back on program. They brought back the basement and it's rust. Yeah, twenty twenty can't get any worse. <laughs> but then, but though I thought, <laughs> but I thought it was so nostalgic. Which that, is just like hilarious because it's like y'all are just furious that your favorite rapper didn't think of it. Yeah, but I thought it was really nostalgic that you was counting the money. It reminded Cameron. me of Cameron. Yeah, that, I had to bring that back. Right. Yo, let me tell y'all something. Counting money and rapping is so difficult. <laughs> For real. Is it? Bro. I can't rap, so I don't know. I was like, this is fucking impossible. How did he do this? <laughs> and he was doing it on beat. Right. I guess, like, but Cameron's flow back, th- like, it was real just, like, uh, digestible. Yeah. Like, it was pretty easy. Just And there was, like, a real nice rhythm to it. Kind of like an easy flow yeah. to it. So I could see it being easier, but nah, that shit is hard, bro. What was there money? was like two takes and I'm like, take the money. What was some of your <laughs> favorite Rap City freestyles? Cameron, of course, I'm sure. Uh, I like Jay-Z's a lot. The I last see, one, the Black Album? Where he puts the cloth the, on yeah, and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Kanye's. I like, uh, I like Eminem's when he did the fucking... I don't remember that one, yeah. The... No, 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 what yep. am I on? <laughs> I don't, yeah, that shit. Um... I, man, I watched a lot of them. I like Joe Budden's Rap City. Yeah. I like DMX's Rap City. Man, There's a lot of good ones, man. I just watched E40's again. E40's crazy. Bro. Did you watch some of them going in, before going to the video? No, because I seen. I feel like I had seen all of them. I saw. I remember watching them when they moved like rooms. You remember when yeah. like um, when Lil Wayne and Birdman went up there, and Lil Wayne was doing the. Uh, live from the 504. Yeah, 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 yeah. Crazy. Yeah. And like Gilly went up there and shit. I remember that. Yeah, like all, like that whole thing, man. I right. I watched it when Eminem went up there, like Relapse era and 50 was behind him and shit. Like, yeah, I just, I would watch all those, bro. Yeah. All that shit. That was but The camera times. one was just so, yeah, all <laughs> like, but me, me and Tigger were talking about it. Like, it was just, it was such a cool, cool piece of content and cool, thing in hip-hop because it forced you to rap and it kind of was like you can't come up here and do anything but this you can't bullshit it no so me and tigger have talked about um we're still in the process of trying to like really bring it back and make it yeah make it a thing make it like a like a netflix type of type of situation because i just think that would be fucking ill like if you could go on netflix season one rap city and instantly you get 10 freestyles that'd be great like, whenever that season one drops, the whole internet would be shook up. Yeah. Just like it is with any other hot Netflix thing. And then regroup season two. But it, what would be cool is it would differentiate, like, 
you can't come up here if you can't rap. Mm. You're not about to come up here and say, put auto-tune on me <laughs> and like, let me sing about Patek's. Yeah, like, you can't fake the funk on Rap no, City. No, like you can't. You got to rap. Yeah. You got to rap. So, yeah, man. I, like, I just thought that was tight. I like where your mind is, man. You're always thinking about content. And I think about content. I'm thinking about this recent release you put oh, out. Oh, not to cut you off. Yeah, go ahead. No, I'm... No, I'm not gonna put the business out there like that. But it was a, it was annoying and like insulting to the rapper's integrity who I fucked with and my integrity to see people assuming that the only way I got those features was I paid for it. Mm. To to for y'all to think that rappers who have that much integrity and you rarely even hear them in the first place would rap for money. Yeah, it's kind of crazy to me. If they were rap for money, how come you haven't heard them? That's a fact. You don't think they've been offered money before? Why they take? Why would they take my? Esoteric money, then. Yeah. It like there was. You don't no even really take money. I remember on a, a lyric no. you said something about you get offered three hundred and fifty, you turn it down. Yeah. Like it's not really about the money for you. No, because I don't care how much money you offer me. If I don't think it's dope, I'm not doing yeah. it. Yeah. And I assume those people are the same way. Money was never even conversation with me and any of the rappers. It was just like it was a respect thing, mm. and that's why like. I'm really proud of that. I'm really proud of putting Chomp together, man. And I'm really, really like thankful for the producers involved. The producers got paid for their work, of yeah. course, but uh, the rappers to kind of just like fuck with me. Just do it on the arm. Yeah, just fuck with me is um, it's dope, man. I really like. That's a really proud moment for me as just like a person and an artist because I respect their pen a lot, and for them to just be like, to not only fuck with me because it's dope. But to like give me what they gave me, like two minutes. Like if y'all ask for money, I would understand yeah. it. Cause I'm asking you to rap for two minutes. Yeah. But that's how you know, like they just love to rap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like to 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 be like, yeah, fuck it. Like what? Two and a half minutes of rap? This is probably the most exciting feature I've got asked to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's just that shit is what it's about, man. Like, what was so impressive to me was that you were able to hang with the best of them and you still held your own you weren't overshadowed and i didn't change a verse oh wow okay i didn't change one you could ask them you could ask yeah. them every every song that came out on chomp my verse on it was what i sent them and once they sent their shit back i didn't change it because i really felt dumb confident because i knew that i was gonna send it mm. so i was really writing like nah like because you got to keep in mind at first i'm writing to impress the producers mm. Because I'm like, ninth, ninth to sit me saying, yeah, we can work if you rap how you did on Guess What. So I'm like, fuck, man, I got to come crazy. Yeah, yeah. So I send him my verse on Momentum. And he's like, fuck. You know, so, no, nah, man, I'm, I'm really proud of Chomp. Yeah. Like, it's not, that, that shit isn't about numbers. It's about nothing but like, nah, you know what? Russ can rap. All I wanted from Chomp was the narrative to be whatever, whatever you want it to be outside of the shit, cool. But. Please now include, which they do, I feel like. Yeah. Russ can rap. Right. That's it. Like, those three words, that's all I wanted out of Chomp. Right. That's it. Because y'all got me fucked up. <laughs> For real. Because I right. rap better than most of these people out here. But, like... Do you feel like the, the pop records sometimes eclipse your lyrical abilities that people just kind of dismiss? Yeah, and I just feel like a general overall disinterest in... Is that a word or is it uninterested? Whatever. But like overall, just not interested in checking out the artist Russ catalog because you have a preconceived notion yeah. of I don't fuck with him, which to me is very high school. Yeah. It's very high school. We've talked about that, like the clubhouse thing. Yeah. To me, it's just high school, you know, like and that's why I respect people like you because you always gave me a fair shot. You know, you gave the music a fair shot yeah. from the first time we spoke. You were mentioning like old songs, like mixtape songs that yeah. like have 100 plays. And I'm like, wow, that's really dope that he took the time to even go listen to the catalog and give it a fair shot. And I feel like a lot of these people, I'm like, I'm like, bro, like, you have a mortgage. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, you're in your 30s. Like, why are you so men mentally in high school where it's like, oh, I heard about you. Yeah. And no, nah, we don't, us over here, we don't like you. Yeah. It's like, you're 16 and I'm fucking embarrassed for you. Right. For real. I'm I'm embarrassed for some of these people in the industry cuz I'm like I'm like none of y'all can say that you know me and if we've met it was nothing more than a 10 minute conversation and if that 10 minute conversation was enough to turn you off, I feel you. I hear you. I'm not mad at that. But for the majority of y'all, y'all haven't met me so you don't know me. 
You only know what you've heard, and if you're and if you're willing to just believe what you've heard, and like I said, you're 16. Yeah. You're you you you're living in a suspended adolescence where you're still operating and and judging people off of what you heard rather than what you personally have decided to take the time out to educate yourself on. So you're mentally in high school, and I'm embarrassed for you. <laughs> and y'all should be ashamed to call yourselves journalists because right. you didn't even do the research yeah. to have journalistic integrity. Who are you? What's your credibility? Yeah. I've written his. What have you written? Yeah. For, for real, what, is, what was your what, what articles did y'all write? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's like just be grown. Yeah, form your own opinion. Don't be 15 where it's like I don't know. So and so said like <laughs> that. It's like really. All right. yeah. Oh, so we're all 15. Got it. Your fans hear you loud and clear because your recent record, hard for me. Yeah, man. That's that's your one second of those collaboration ones. with Scott Storch. You debuted that a year ago at a Barnes and Noble. Yeah. <laughs> Now, fast yeah. forward 2020, you put it out. Mm -hmm. Why were you sitting on it for so long? I don't know. That, and that was like me and Scott's probably fourth song out now because it was Wife You Up. I don't know. What, what am I talking up? about? Like seventh song. It's the second song. Okay. Like seventh, eighth. I, dropped I can't like, even keep counting at this I point. I dropped like four, four days in a row just being a nut. Yeah. Um, I sat on that song for so long because I am, I'm going to fucking attribute this to what Pharrell just said, which... I, I, it just resonated with me so much. I'm too zoomed in sometimes, man. Like, I'm too here. And I don't fucking step out and kind of like <sighs> exhale right. and be like, okay, let me get my bearings and let me, let me see, like, let me look at the playing field and shit. And um, I don't know. Like, it was a really, really great song that I was obsessed with the second I made it. Uh, and I guess I, this is just going to sound bizarre, but this is, this was literally the thinking. This is the thinking with a lot of my songs. It's too good. I can't just drop it. It's too good. <laughs> Which is like, what does that even mean? Right. It's too good. I can't just drop it. And I think what I mean by that is I need like some hoopla around. Like I need, yeah, need I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, yeah. I don't know. I guess that's what that means. Cause like, that's really the genuine thought is like, nah, it's just too hard. I can't just drop it. But it's like, that's exactly what you should do, yeah. is just drop it. And so it, it takes me a minute to work through that process. That was Best on Earth, though. Like, Best on Earth, I had, I was sitting on for eight months. And it was just like, just drop it. And I was like, all right, so we just dropped it. But I don't know, man. Like, I'm in my, you know, it's ironic because of the book. It's all right. in your head and get out of my way. But honestly, I'm consistent with my brand and messaging I think without even trying to be because I'm really doing this in a selfish way for me and it's therapeutic for me. So even my book, like that's like, I need to read this yeah. over and over again because it's like, it's all in my head. Yeah. Like, what do you mean you need all this? Like, this is me talking to myself. Like, what do you mean you need this? Just drop the fucking song. Yeah. Like, so I have those moments where I snap out of it. And I'm like, I'm like, bro, when I was 19, I thought that having 50 followers was enough to drop a song and go platinum. Right? Yeah. What am I waiting for right now? <laughs> and the plus, when you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You at the Barnes and Noble, the and it went crazy, signing, like like as if they knew it their whole lives. So it's it almost crazy. like I was overwhelmed with how well it was received that I yeah. felt that there's no way I can just drop this how I drop every other song. It needs something different. It's like nah, bro. Like just let that one fly. Right. I'm, I'm gonna just I'm gonna try to get better at that. Just like letting shit fly and people. And that sounds funny to people looking from the outside looking in because like you let everything fly. Yeah. But like, you know, there's so many songs that I haven't let fly where like I'm playing you shit from two years ago and you're like, what like what's wrong with you? Right. you know? So you're but, happy with the reception of, of the record? Yeah, but I learned to not even care about what the reception is in the first month, first couple months. Like check back in a couple years. Yeah, right. Seriously, check like it's hard, but you have to um as an artist and I think as a person, you have to kind of like train yourself to detach from the results yeah. which is like really difficult especially as an artist because we're so especially now where it's uh like it's a hyper driven number attention yeah. type of world we live in where you want to drop a song and it's gonna be like how many plays did i get the first day yeah. what playlist what's the reaction how many people added it to their library right. you know especially like when you're with the label they're giving you all this data like Here's the burn rate. Here's how many people listen to your song longer than this song. And here's how many people listen to more than a minute and a half. It's like, who gives a fuck? <laughs> Man, like, what yeah. the fuck are y'all talking about? And right. it's like, 
and I'm a numbers person. I've like I've always been. Math was always my favorite subject. Yeah. Like I like numbers, so I gotta pull myself out of the wormhole sometimes and be like, bro, who gives a fuck? Yeah. Like check back in four years, like put the song out and move on and check back in four years yeah. if you even wanna check back. It's been a year since I seen you last. Mm -hmm. And your book, It's All in Your Head, since then had sold over a hundred thousand. Yeah copies which is ridiculous yeah, I know. and i remember the last time considering we i hardly read <laughs> <laughs> the, the irony <laughs> and then you told me the last time we spoke that but the, i live a lot the so. next time that's what i was gonna say the next time you the last time we spoke you said that the next book mm -hmm. was gonna be called the obstacle called you but you said you're gonna release that when you live more life yeah have you lived more life since not enough to write that. Oh, come on, Russ. No, but I, I, I do want to write an um, a artist help book type of thing. Like, you know those like really short like how to, the how to books? Like a manual. Yeah, like for dummies yeah. thing. Yeah, just like how to navigate the, I don't know, like the artist manual shit. Mm. Shit like that where it's like 50 pages type of shit. I don't know. I just want to like. That's why, man, I be getting, like, I understand. I understand people's gripe with me. I really mm. do. Uh, and it, but it bothers me because I know that I'm really actually trying to help. Like, and I don't know how many other people are really actually genuinely trying to help. Yeah. And maybe there's a lot of them, you know. But uh, I know in my heart of hearts, like, I genuinely have uh, an interest and desire to see other people succeed. Yeah. I really do. And anyone who's ever been around me, knows that like I'm your biggest cheerleader I'm not ever the guy who's like I don't want you to succeed because what does that mean for me yeah I've just never been that like and so it's really man it's really unfortunate that I see the way the media like depicts me as this just like like some sort of villain asshole of a yeah, yeah I'm like how like there's fucking people who beat the shit out of women out here and shit yeah. like that Y'all got mad at me because I said stop doing drugs. <laughs> right. What does that say about the culture? Yeah. If 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 me saying, if the message was stop glorifying drugs and drugs are bad, got me the villain thing. Then what does that say about? Yeah. The culture. Yeah. What does that say about y'all? If me having that perspective is what made me be terrible. Yeah. How dare he comment yeah. on drug abuse <laughs> and say that it's bad? Are y'all fucking kidding? How for real? dare he raise five hundred thousand dollars for Black Initiatives <laughs> this year? How dare you, Russ? <laughs> but no, we'll talk. But, well, we'll talk about that though. Like, well, why was that important for you this year? You know, with in the wake of everything going on, Black Lives Matter, things of that nature, you raised five hundred thousand dollars to yeah. ten specific Black uh, organizations. Why was mm -hmm. that important for you to do that? I just think that. Being a white person who's financially benefiting from a uh, predominantly black field in black art form, which is hip hop music, yeah. and that's the vessel I came through. And people could say, well, you're not even really a rapper. You sing. Yeah, but I came through the vessel of hip hop. Yeah. You feel me? Like, this is the channel it came through. So for me to be who I am and have this house and just everything and financially, like I said, capitalize off of black culture, yeah. I think it's literally the least I could do is contribute in a financial way back. Yeah. Like, I got money from this, I should put money back into this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, I could personally just write a check for a million dollars and be like, there's my contribution. Yeah. Or I could use my fans that I've gotten off of you know, black culture yeah. and mobilize them and raise money. And this is why I always tell people, I'm like, man, like, like imagine if, you know, a uh, name a massive pop artist, name a, na name a massive soccer player, whoever the fuck it is, what? Yeah. 50 million followers, 100 million followers, whatever. Imagine if they mobilize their fan base and we're like, yo, I'm selling glitter and everything's going to Black Lives Matter. If I raised half a million, what the fuck do you think like one of these huge people could have raised, you yeah. know? So I just think... I thought it was also dope that you raised awareness surrounding the Breonna Taylor case. Yeah. The take, Taking Back record and yeah. number and yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that. It was a I hotline. Thought, I thought that was cool for that, like... Because we got mad people to call for Breonna Taylor. Yeah. And it's sad that 
it's sad that I knew that if I said it was for Breonna Taylor, you wouldn't have called. Right. That's what's fucked up. I knew I had to disguise it as a right. funny humor. It's like, call here to get your ex back. Right. And you're just like curious who you call. But how many calls did we get to Breonna like 14, Taylor? 14,000 in the first day type yeah. of shit. And that was in the first day. So I don't know. I just think, man, like where I can help, I do. And I was uh, fortunate to get connected with people who know way more about that shit than me, like yeah. Tamika Mallory. I was going to say, you mentioned Tamika Mallory and my son and my Stockholm son. Syndrome. Hell yeah, because that's why I said, like, um, I got to do my part. So I went and raised a half a million for the cause. But shout out to the ones on the front line yeah. getting they fight on. I'm talking about Tamika. I'm talking about my son. It's like, I'm not about to fake the funk and be like, I'm rah-rah right. on the front lines. But y'all, I know it's like, I'm super educated. Yeah, yeah. Nah. But I will be aware of my privilege and be aware of my platform, be aware of my audience, and be aware of how I can mobilize my fans and raise money to contribute back to a culture that allowed me to have yeah. a, a living yeah. and, and tip the hat and, and offer help to the people who, when the hype yeah. dies, yeah. they're still fighting. Yeah, absolutely. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's like, I feel like what's fucked up, and that's why you got to tip your hat to the Tamikas and the Mysons of the world and yeah. just other people who maybe don't even have the names, but they know yeah. they know who they are. Yeah. Like, Tamika, the Mysons, yeah. yeah. You got to tip your hat to them because when the hype, which Black Lives Matter shouldn't be hype and trendy, right. but when that, you know what I mean, yeah. when that dies after 50 days this year, mm -hmm. right? Because everyone was black squared up and <laughs> the black and squared. then it dies and you're like back to regular. Yeah, to like those people are still fighting. Yeah. Like it's an everyday thing for those people. And it like, man, that's so commendable yeah. to be that committed. It's like, you got to, you got to respect that. And like I said, I know my place and know that. I'm not ever gonna be able to feel you ever. Yeah. I'll be able to hear you, but I can't. I can't feel you. Right. So I understand right. that I can't understand, and that is an understanding. Yeah. So with that being said, how can I help? And if sometimes all I can do to help is, you know, you need 50k, you need 50. Cool. Boom, boom, mm -hmm. boom. And like y'all know what to do with it more than me, because y'all are on the front lines and y'all yeah. are doing the education. Man, I'm happy yeah. I can help, because I don't know how else I could without. Yeah living your life yeah. <laughs> you know that's definitely commendable you know you're mobilizing your fans and i know you miss your fans yeah you know do these live performances because when i think about russ i think about sold out shows at the staples center solo yeah i saw that you tweeted that you said you miss live performances Fuck. like what man you, i do what do you miss so much about doing these live performances russ i didn't realize how much i missed them till i had a conversation with john mayer mm. Right? This Which, is during the pandemic? This is about a couple weeks ago. Okay. Did I tell you about this, Milan? The craziest shit, bro. First of all, John Mayer to me is one of those people that... You know people are really smart when they text really fast and it's paragraphs <laughs> and it's like they're getting it out of a book or something. Yeah. I'm He's like... one of those guys? Bro, it's the craziest, most profound shit fast as hell mm. and you're like you're a fucking genius you know what i'm saying and it's he just has this incredible perspective so i was talking to him about i was really just sending him a thank you mm. to be honest i hadn't i hadn't talked to him since fucking 2017 2018 john mayer yeah wow yeah well because what's there to talk about i don't know I, what does one say to john yeah. mayer <laughs> <laughs> nice watch what does one i don't know right Right? Like, I've never met him. I FaceTime, we've talked, but I've, wow. what does one just randomly say? Like, I wish him happy birthday one time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah. nah, so I haven't like really talked to him in a couple years. But, you know, a couple weeks ago, I just reached out and I was like, man, I just wanted to say thank you for the insight you gave me a couple years ago. Not even working on the song, but like the insight. Because he told me this thing that always stuck with me. He told me a lot of shit that stuck with me, stuck with me but there was this thing he told me like three years ago where he said, um, I was damn near about to name my album it, but he said, you know, cause I was asking him about how do you like adjust to this life? And I feel like I got one foot in my old life and one foot in this. Mm -hmm. He said, take your jacket off. Hmm. Which is so simple, but so profound. So you were gonna name Shake the Snow Globe? I was gonna name, it was either that one or Zoo, uh, like take your coat take off. Take your coat off, okay. But it was like, 
I was like, damn, this might sound like an R&B album. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, but so he told me that three years ago, so, but it like really helped me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I was hitting him saying like, this is years ago when I'm like, man, I feel like people are trying to assassinate my character and shit. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, I think you need to move the goalpost on what assassination is. Mm. And just like little shit like that, that was really, anyway, so I hit him a couple of weeks ago just thanking him for all that shit and just the insight. And I was telling him about my newfound, like, uh, mental space, you know? Mm. And how I just feel. Can I read the DMs? Yeah. Shit, like. Why not? Because I'm going to misquote my own self. Nah, make sure we get John Mayer correct. We can't fix yeah, it. Yeah, I don't want to fuck it up. Yeah. Because it was really, really, really. This is all about from live performances, this profound message. No, it is. So this is De December 11th. Um, so I said, it's like as soon as, this is after I said thank you, da 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 da. I said, it's like as soon as you think you have it figured out, you realize you know nothing. Mm. And he goes, yep, but it's all waves, win big, lose small. And he goes, you good? Question mark. And it's almost like he knew I wasn't. So, like, you right. asked that. Um, and, of course, I'm sending fucking paragraphs because I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> fucking nut. But right. I'm like, nah, man. Like, it just felt whatever. So, I, it felt good to, like, talk to somebody about this shit who probably knew. So, I said, um, I said, I've been better, <laughs> but, but I can't it's complain. I said, but I can't complain, right? At the end of the day, we're making music for a living, so shit could be worse. I guess I'm just in this phase mentally where I feel the pressure to go next level in my career because I'm not where I want to be. Mm -hmm. And now that I have a real platform, there's no excuses. So I beat myself up a little bit, trying to just juggle the love of the game versus the points, I guess, which is a vicious battle. And not even the points so much per se. I think it's more so the need for bigger and better, et cetera. The never ending chase for more. But it's only because I know I'm capable of more. I said, I don't know, maybe it's my ego. <laughs> like I said, trying to figure it out. Yeah. Sorry for the long message. Sounds how, how like a song. <laughs> yeah. I don't, and, he, and he said, I understand every word. He goes, you know, um, and this is just one of those small messages that was, you know, incredible. He goes, I'm good using every bit of idle time. And I hope I'm not like, ex if you, I, I'm sorry, John Mayer won't see this, but if you do, <laughs> I, like, I hope I'm not exposing anything with you. I, like, everything seems yeah. pretty, like, kosher and fine. But um, he said, you know, using every bit of idle time to go for that more you're talking about, he said, I think this is the shit that was like, wow. He said, I think the trick is to go for more without feeling like you're less than. Hmm. Which was, like, so incredible wow. for me, because I'm sitting here and asking him, like, you know, I want to go to this next level and I want more only because I know I'm capable of Don't more. Don't sell yourself like, short, And though, he's like, yeah, the said. trick is to go for more without feeling like you're less than, which I just thought was fucking incredible. Do you get that feeling when you're connecting with your fans on stage? So, so now here's what happens. So I say, I say, wow, I, you know, that balance of going for more without feeling like I'm less than is really a precise sweet spot. Lately, I've just been super hard on myself, but I share the optimism, too. I still always think my best song is the one I'm about to make. The need to be amongst and in the mix right now, though, takes its toll on my process, but I know I need to let go and respect the journey of it all. Easier said than done. And he goes, I haven't heard anyone be as honest about this feeling as you just wrote. He said this pandemic was about the worst scenario. This is like, this was the really crazy thing. And I'm only revealing this because I think it could help a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry if this ruins, it's not going to ruin our relationship. Uh, he said this pandemic was about the worst scenario you could have picked for people who work off the enthusiasm of others and mm. who need an audience to understand their place in the universe. That's and real. I thought that was the crazy. So it, he says that, he goes, I've been talking about it with people that, that doing nothing isn't an option for a lot of artists and that some are going to just become really brazen and crafty and that was going to sting the others. He said, every day kind of feels like Grammy nom day out here. Which is so, That's it was crazy. just. That's crazy. That anticipation, that anxiety. Yeah, bro. And it's it like, like, I didn't realize how much I missed touring till he said, this pandemic was about the worst scenario you could have picked for people who work off the enthusiasm of others and who need an audience to understand their place in the universe. Wow. And I was like, man. So I, t I said to that, I said, I never even thought about it until you said it. I don't even think how, how I realized how much I feed off shows and that energy till it's taken out of my life. Yeah. I said, without it, I guess I feel a little disoriented. I don't have my bearings. What's up? What's down? <laughs> Anxiety is at an all-time high, but this is the new normal we have to navigate. 
I said, it's like I can't catch my breath. And I think being active on social media during these times is also pretty rough because mm. it's a lot to take in, so much chatter while being idle. Got to step away a little to decompress. But, yeah. you know, it's like, so that was like the extent of the conversation, but um, I didn't really realize how much I missed touring till I started to feel like I was in a Black Mirror episode <laughs> and everything was digital and fucking like, because there's no touring, yeah. like he said, you don't understand your value till like how you, you know, with, I can't even, I just read this, I can't even you yeah. know, recite this shit, but like, when you need that enthusiasm of other people to understand your place, it's like... Because it's transactional in some ways. Yeah, it, it, it's energy, bro. Yeah, it's like... It's transferable. Me making a song, putting it out on the internet and just going about my day in my house... I don't feel what that did. Mm. I don't care what the numbers say. If like you always say, million. real life, greater sign, internet. Right, and now we've all been subject <laughs> to just the internet. Right. So you've taken away real life, and now internet has become king. Perception has become king. Shows is where I used to really find and feel that energy and that confidence because regardless of what the internet was saying, I would go to a show and sing new songs, sing old songs, and feel people react to them and feel and see them cry and yeah. all these things. And it's like, damn, man, this is what I do for people. Like, this is my this is my purpose, is to create shit that makes people feel like this, like this shit that I'm touching right now in real yeah. life. Without that, it's just the internet. And it's like, damn, bro, if this pandemic would have hit 2018, I don't know. Like, I was... I wasn't suicidal in 2018, but I was thinking about death. I wasn't thinking wow. I was going to be the one to do it, but I was. I, it was like this suffocating feeling, and that was when the world was wide yeah. open. So I couldn't imagine if this pandemic hit at a time like that for me mentally. I don't know if I would have made it out, and, yeah. and 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 I empathize with people who, uh, and I'm not looking for pity at all, yeah. because people will just say, "Get over it. You have millions of dollars," which is a whole different conversation, but. Um, you know, I think it's for artists. It's it's tough to to just live right now in a digital space and kind of only be subject to feel your impact from numbers. Right. Because numbers can be faked, and, and and the comparison game is more brutal than ever right now. Because we all we got is numbers, and damn, what'd you do? Yeah. What'd your song do? And this song, oh, this song's got forty million. This, because because let's keep it real. Anyone who's dropped a song in 2020, you have not felt what that actually did for the world yet. Right, because there's you a haven't. palpability with music. There's a connection I, that yeah. you can't necessarily quantify based on. I performed data. Best on Earth one time in my life. Really? It came out end of October 2019. I did the Mala Luna Festival in San Antonio. That was the first time it got performed. And then I did like an album release party in New York, uh, January and like performed it but that wasn't like a show yeah. but that was it so you only so. performed that record once yeah wow then the world shut down that's crazy yeah so it's like you know and I'm, like I said I'm not looking like damn bro we feel bad for you I'm, I'm, it's not even about that yeah. I'm just giving y'all like insight to like how I think and maybe how some other artists are feeling but it's tough like John Mayer was saying bro when it, it's hard for the artists who, who kind of rely on the enthusiasm of other people like he said to find their place and I never thought that I was one of those people till this pandemic like yeah. started lasting a long time yeah. and I'm like man it just feels a little empty it's feeling emptier and emptier to put out songs only on the internet and only feel reactions on the internet because you yeah. can't feel that yeah but I already know you got the dates ready for Shake the Snow Globe 2021. Uh, yes, and we hope that that shit happens yeah yeah we hope that happens what songs are you ready uh, are you anxious to perform all the new shit, but like, I do want to see what the fuck Best on Earth like really does. I saw Best on Earth three, four days after that shit dropped in San Antonio. Mm. Like, we're talking about less than a week after it dropped, and it was crazy. Yeah. And it wasn't even my show, it was a festival. Wow. I'm like, bro, if that's what a festival after a week of it being out was, what the fuck was Hollywood Bowl, my own show, 17,000 people gonna be? Damn. But how loud would that shit? You know what I'm saying? Like, what is that then, feeling? And since you know? then, Bia has become a monster with an so all right. She's so ill, bro. And her yeah. new project is so hard. Yeah. That girl has one of the illest tones in rap. Yeah. Men or women, like, 
one of the illest tones and deliveries like ever. Go listen to a whole lot of money and all that shit. Skate so hard, man. man. She's so hard. But we talking about 2021. You know, I'm looking forward to his new music. Yes. You know, I saw a tweet that you were recently in the studio with Chris Brown. Yeah. What was that experience like? Really, really tight. So uh, he's got really great energy. He's obviously crazy talented. Um, Scott Storch had been trying to put us together for a minute. Hitmaker had been trying to put us together. And, you know, they were like, Hitmaker was sending songs. And it just, you know, artists you know just sometimes just it's not the right song. You don't feel it all the way, whatever it was. Um, but so internet money, I had like, I feel like all my fucking, <laughs> everything ends up being like some fucking drawn out ass story. But I feel like there's <laughs> a lot of connections. Like I mean, we don't know. Like, but it's all genuine. Yeah. So randomly in my house, I don't know, a month ago, I'm just like on YouTube at 2 a.m. at night. Mm. And just on my homepage, you know, just like Taz Taylor talking about the Lemonade record. Yeah. I'm like, cool. I've been seeing his name and internet mm -hmm. money. I'm like, let me like, let me watch in. this. Yeah, let me just in. see what this is. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I like, I'm really interested in this. I like how he broke it down. I just like where his head was at. I like yeah. that he created this whole collective internet money. I was like, man, let me keep like digging. So like, I dove deep on the on, on the YouTube uh, tip about internet money and shit and Taz Taylor and kind of watched some interviews. And I was like, man, I really fuck with this dude's mind from mm -hmm. what I've seen. Like. And just how he built this thing up. You know what I'm saying? He's got 50 producers at the crib, like, making crazy shit. I'm like, that's really dope. So I hit him. Um, and I was like, man, I just, like, fuck with you and what you built. Like, yeah. I wasn't even that familiar with all the songs. Yeah. Lemonade is obviously fucking insane. But um, and he was like, let's work. I was like, say less. So he sent me, man, those people are crazy yeah. over there, bro. He sent me a pack of 88 beats that night with 35 loops and I'm wow. like y'all are fucking crazy <laughs> and I always like try to make it a point I know I haven't kept my absolute word to this although I, I feel like I maybe I have but whenever a new producer and me work whenever they send a pack I like to instantly send them back shit right I know I haven't done it with a couple y'all and I apologize it's not because of y'all <laughs> but um it's not you, it's me. Yeah, but um, <laughs> so he sent me a pack and I sent him back a song like in the next like three, four hours. And it's, yeah. It's really hard. And um, so anyway, so right, almost felt like that's unrelated. I hit Chris Brown just randomly because I knew we were trying to get connected. I'm like, yo, we should make a smash. He's like, let's do it. All right. And it's like, cool. Uh, what, was I sending him shit? Oh yeah, so I sent him a song. I said, I got something crazy that you would uh, that you would sound crazy on, whatever the fuck. He's like, text me, text him. Yeah. And he's like, come to LA, let's get in the studio. I'm like, cool. So I fly out to LA. This is the first week of December type of shit. Um, so I land and you know, I'm waiting for Chris to tell me what the play is, what the mm -hmm. move is. I'm like, shit, I'm just chilling, I'm at the hotel. Taz texts me, he goes, yo, you gotta come to LA so we can work. I'm like, shit, I actually just got here. Right, I'm here. So now, I know in the back of my head, like, I, I flew out here to work with Chris, but I'm like, until he hits me, I'm going to work, like, I'm going to go over here and get some shit done. Yeah. And I've been trying to fuck with internet money anyway, like, in person. I want to meet Taz. Like, yeah. I fuck with the whole mentality. No yeah. Yeah, so I'm like, cool, let's do it. So he's like, all right, I got the studio at 7 tonight or some shit like that. I'm like, all right, sick. So I'm about to, I'm about to leave. Like, we're about to leave to go there. Chris FaceTimes me. He's like, pull up. I'm like, fuck. I'm like, yo, I had like, yeah. I was waiting on you, but I had a session with Internet Money, but they're ill producers. He's like, well, shit, if they're ill producers, tell them to pull up too. I'm like, shit, well, look at that. <laughs> right. Now it's me, Internet Money, and Chris. Rustradamus strikes again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, so I hit Taz. I'm like, y'all cool to pull up yeah. at Chris's house? And we like, we just fuck around. Like, I never met any of them. So like, it was fun. It was cool, man. We like, you know, it was, it was more of like an introduction, get to know each other, just right. kicking it and vibing and shit. Like, Chris was playing us a bunch of songs that, you know, he's got and, you know. But, yeah, we made some shit that night that's it's hard, you know. We're going to make some more shit, mm. um, but it's hard. But he, you know, Chris sent me some shit to get on, just like outside of the internet money thing, yeah. too. But that was dope, man. I like when things kind of just it's happen really naturally. Yeah, yeah, like, and I only give those crazy backstories so that, and they're not crazy. But I give them because I didn't like watching interviews when I was trying to get on and people would be like, yo, so how'd the song with Kanye West come about? And they'd be like, yeah, man. So I was like broke. And then I woke up and like 
yay hit me and then we just like <laughs> made this shit I, it's like right what about the in between yeah though? yeah yeah like make it feel tangible yeah. make it feel real like because i know there's a real story there so i don't know i give those stories to like really they're not sto- it's the truth it's the truth right yeah to like let y'all know like it's not just this that or the other it's me being on youtube trying to fucking still learn shit and educate yeah. myself Taz Taylor, da 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 being proactive, hitting Chris Brown. Like, being proactive. It's about being proactive. I could kick my feet up and wait for everyone to hit me. I'm I'm Russ, and y'all should be hitting me up. <laughs> yeah. Nah, like, well, I'm going to hit y'all up. I be DMing people to this day. I what, said, I, what I want to know is real, if it's real or not, is mm-hmm. that you said that you're working on three projects at once. Is that true? Is that really happening right now in real time? Yeah, because it's like... So what are you working on in 2021, Russ? I feel like, man, where I'm at right now musically is uh, I want to just, like, 2021, I want to just go, like, next level. That's what I was talking about with John Mayer with um, before I even, like, put out an album. But, you know, I'm always, I know shit's going to pop off crazy again. I'm working on my second blow up. Mm. That's why I said in the Grammy bag freestyle, like, like, I used to think that once you blow up, it happens once and then you're good forever. That's it. And it's like, nah, like, you got to, like, constantly blow up. Got to be consistent. Yeah, you keep going and you constantly blow up. Like, Drake blew up to another level after Started From The Bottom. Yeah. And then another one with One Dance. And then another one with God's Plan. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, um, that's my goal from a, like, single standpoint. I want to just drop these, like, crazy songs. But from an album standpoint, i just been trying to craft these, like, um, I don't know how to even explain it. They're not concept albums, but... It's like projects, recordings. Just projects. Yeah. Like I wanted to make something that was all me again. Because mm. I got so comfortable with... You know, we were talking about it. Like, I got so comfortable with people sending me beats and me me like, me like having my feet kicked up. Yeah. Being like, I don't got to make beats. I got 150 Boy Wanted beats, 50 Ill Mind beats, mm-hmm. 40 Oz beats, Murder beats, T-minus. I'm lit. Yeah. Fuck do I need to make beats for anymore? But then I was like, nah, wait a second, man. That's not what even got me here. Yeah. And I never want to lose touch with myself. And I never want to lose touch with my fans and what got me here. I love Boy Wonder. I love Ilman. I love all that shit. But I can never stop uh, cultivating the, the garden that blossomed me that's kind of that's you know good saying? that you say that because i was kind of leading into my next questions like how do you stay motivated at this point in your career because i remember on the, the song a lot more you said that you clip you complete your bucket list yeah so it's like how do you stay motivated at this point man by it's it's intrinsic hmm. it's just like i'm trying to one-up myself you know like a five times platinum song is cool i want a six times one hmm. like you know, Staples is cool. I want to do the Rose Bowl. Yeah. Like, you know, and it's hard because then we're talking about the number scenes again. And yeah. It quantifies success, you know, and it puts a number on success. But, uh, you know, and that's the points thing. But what motivates me, uh, really, the intrinsic level is just I love to make music and I'm, and I'm trying to make my best song every time. Mm. And it's a fucked up, it's a torture chamber in a sense to be uh, an artist, or I guess the type of artist I am, where I feel like as good as this song was tonight and as good as I feel about it, tomorrow morning when I wake up, that shit sucks. (laughs) I need to make something better. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you never, like, buy into your own hype? I buy, like, I do where I'm like, this shit is fucking ill, but I'm like, I can do so much better than this. Like, and even if I don't think I can do so much better than this, I'm like, what if I can yeah. And so that's what keeps me going into the studio is like, I want to make a better song. I want to make a song that I love even more than that. And so, you know, as far as going back to just like me making sure I never lose touch with myself and what got me here, I wanted to make a whole project like There's Really a Wolf Again, oh, where wow. it was produced, mixed, everything by me, no features. Just because it's like, when I get to this, this is what I think right now. This could change in right. literally in an hour. But when I get to that next level where I want to get to, I think that would be a cool project to just like drop off. Mm-hmm. Like how Drake kind of did, if you're reading this, is too late. Yeah. How Kendrick dropped the untitled. Like something in the interim. Yeah, just kind of like, 
here's there's really wolf two or yeah. call it something else but that's the format you know it's all my beats all pretty like and i just feel like that would probably fuck around and be in all my fans favorite shit more mm. than the like if i had dre stories yeah, yeah. you know what i'm saying like just because i know what my fans like you know so uh, i want to make sure that i always have like a project like that in the cut so yeah. i got that whole album is done it's like an 18 song there's really a wolf two wow. type of format is done um and then there's this other album where I'm just like, just the greatest shit ever. Yeah. You know, like, let me work with as many people as possible and try and make the greatest songs ever. Mm. And what would that album be? And then I'm like, let me sing for five straight songs and let me do chomp rap for five straight. Of course. And I feel like, honestly, if you put the There's Really Wolf 2 format together, the greatest songs of just collaborations and other producers together, the just straight R&B shit and straight bar shit, if you take like... 14 of the best from all of that combined, yeah. you probably get a classic album. Right. Um, right? Because that's, I mean, that's like putting, you know, losing control with Best on Earth, with Momentum, with fucking, you know, Kehlani. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's just kind of like, fuck. Yeah, it's hard to what deny. What else do y'all want? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's hard to deny. I reckon it's like that. Yeah. 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 So you talk about, like, the motivation... You know, but I talk, I think about the inspiration and, you know, mm. you're really close to your mother. Yeah. And, you know, on Shake the Snow Globe, you had a song dedicated to her mama. I was wondering, did she hear it? Of course she heard it, but, like, what was her reaction when she heard that record? Let me tell you all my regret with mama. Really? Regrets? It's not a regret. It's not a regret in the sense of, like, I shouldn't have done it. But I felt it when I was doing it where... On the hook, I'm singing, you ain't got to cry no more, yeah. mama. And it's like, but the verses are not anything about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, like, that wasn't the, you won't use to wake me up to school. And yeah. You know, like, but, that wasn't that content. But my perspective was like, I'm about to flex in the verses mm -hmm. as a way to be like, look, we did it. But I feel like you made up for that on No Tears Left, though. That's, I was about to call No Tears Left Mama Part 2. It was like down to the wire wise because I was like, this is what I really probably should have done. Yeah. But when you listen to No Tears Left, that's almost what you feel like the content of Mama should have been. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because if Mama, if on Shake the Snow Globe, if that was called something else, you look at that as a more like uh, rap classic based track. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I, like me calling it Mama, but the verses aren't giving y'all what like those backstories of just yeah, about yeah, my yeah, mom yeah. and shit. It kind of like throws you off, but my perspective was like, I want to rap about the great things going on in life as a way to be like, look, mom, we did it. Like, but you we're in talk Morocco. About, but you also shit. talk about those losses too, or no tears left. Yeah. Like, were those? Were you making references to things that happened this year? Were you still about? Like yeah, man. Like so, uh, it's hard to exp it, it's hard for people to probably empathize with like the losses my mom took if you don't know my mom, but. My friends, like, you know, because my mom comes around with me everywhere, so like, yeah. my friends know my mom. And it know, feels like everyone, that's like your mom is everyone's mom at this yeah, point. Yeah, you know? that's how it is even with my friends, though, but it's like they know her temperament and yeah. shit like that. And just, you know, the pandemic really mentally fucked my mom up because she, you know, she needs to be out of the house and she needs to be around people because it's just her in the house, yeah. you know? And so it was rough. And, um, you know, we, we had a uh, we had a dog that was my mom's world. Nico. Nico yeah. was my mom's world, bro. And, like, if you know my mom, like I said, if you know my mom, that dog and just animals in general, like, my mom will cry if you fucking, like, crunch a leaf. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, she just has such yeah. a respect, I guess, in that sense for, for innocent lives, yeah. or, I guess you could say. Um... But, so, that dog was my mom's world. Yeah. Like, we, we had four dogs, but that was her whole world. And he was fine for, you know, he was just fat, but he was <laughs> fine. And then, randomly, like, you know, he got, he had Cushing's disease, mm -hmm. right? And the doctor's like, yeah, no, but he'll still live to, like, 12. You know, he's five at this point. Yeah. We're like, okay, cool. And... Randomly, he gets sick, whatever. Like, we notice he's sick. I'm like, Mom, you got to take him to the vet. She's like, yeah, like, let's go. Because he looks sick. And we thought it was like a routine. Like, he was just sick. And so the vet's like, oh, we're going to keep him overnight. I'm like, all right, cool. 
And the next day, he's like, yeah, he's getting better. And we're like, all right, of course. Third day, he's like, he's not getting better. Damn. And we're like, what? What is happening? So we go in to see him, to see Nico, and he's fucking looking just like super fucked up. And we're all like emotional. You know, and like I said, I don't, I don't expect pity from anyone on right. any shit I be talking about. People lose humans and brothers and yeah. shit. But if you have dogs, you know this what's up. This is some up. John Wick shit, man. Yeah, man. Like if, you, But if you have <laughs> yeah. a dog, if, if you treat animals like family, which we It's like do, family members, yeah. Yeah, it's a family member, bro. And, that, and, and my mom being by herself, that dog provided so much joy and, yeah. and, and, and like just companionship for her. It was like her whole world was yeah. that dog. So we go in that third day. And he's looking super lifeless. And, you know, the vet's like, yeah, we're going to keep doing tests and try to get him better. And she's like, just don't let him die yeah. without me being here. So we go home, right? 30 minutes later, he calls my mom. is like, Nico's dead. Oh, man. And we're like, what? And so my mom is just like, just fucked up about yeah. it. Right? A week later... Seriously, a week later, maybe six days later, her dad dies. Your grandfather dies, right? Yeah, her dad dies. And, like, uh, my mom is, uh, she's the most, like, compassionate, loving, selfless human being in the world. And she's so sensitive that I don't care if it was just a dog. And I don't care if her dad did get to see 88 or 90 years like, mm -hmm. I don't want my mom feeling any pain at all. Yeah. And, you know, hearing her say and seeing her say, like, like, um, mm. take the time. Um, not just hearing her say, like, you know, uh, pieces of her heart are gone it's like <laughs> i can give my mom a bentley i can't give her pieces of her heart back yeah. you know and uh like i said i don't expect empathy uh or or like pity uh because people have been through worse that's not yeah. the point it's just a matter of like my mom is my everything yeah so you know and i've always like prided myself on being able to help everyone around me, especially my mom, and give her anything she needs, but, man, seeing her say shit like that, yeah. like, there's pieces of my heart that are gone, Yeah. and, I, and how do you argue with it, you know? That's, that's real. I can't give her that, like, and it fucks me up that I can't, like, it doesn't matter, like, yeah. a Bentley, a trip to Tanzania, like, right. it's not you want another beach house? It doesn't matter, bro, yeah. like, there's pieces of that precious, like, Money can't Person's buy that. Part, nah. Yeah. You can't get it. So, yeah, man. So that shit, like, like I said, regardless of what she lost and if you feel like that was worthy of, of me feeling like or her, like, it's not the point. The yeah. point is that seeing my mom have a pain that I couldn't do anything about yeah. is <laughs> shit, man. Yeah. It's shit. It's shit. But on the adverse of pain, there's joy. You yeah. Know, before we get out of here, though, you know, yeah. one thing that stuck out to me this year is that you said something on Twitter that you said, like, 2011, mm -hmm. me is ecstatic <laughs> Yeah. 2020 me. Yes. I just want to know, describe that place you were, you know, 10 years ago. <sighs> Man, 10 years ago, I was trying to get right here, bro. Yeah. And that's what, like, that's where I fucking, I, uh, I find the gratitude, like, the quickest way to unjade is to be grateful and it's so much easier said than done and i've had such a problem with it because i'm so focused on what else i want and what i should be doing and how much i can i can i achieve and all these things that i forget how bad i wanted what i currently have right you know what i'm saying and it and it and i rob myself of the blessings of my present day because i'm so fucking laser focused on tomorrow and what should I do tomorrow and, yeah. yo let's shoot this video and like make sure they're getting this shit to radio da -da -da. all this shit and like how can I level up and hitting John Mayer like man yeah. I'm in the next level da -da -da. and it's like bro breathe like yeah. look around yeah. you know what I'm saying 
And I've, I have to force myself to have those moments where I do walk out here and I do step outside and I say, hold on. I really got a logo I in have my a pool. Lo- and that's why it's like, <laughs> yeah, you're damn right. I'm going to sit right yeah. here and do an interview. with, And you're damn right I'm going to rap about it. Because yeah. you know what? I used to rap about wanting it. Yeah. You think once I get it, I'm not going to rap about it? I used right. to rap about it before I had it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, and I need to remind myself of those times when what I currently have is what I used to want. Right. And I can never let that shit out of my sight, man. I think a lot of people, whether it's artists, journalists, whoever, whatever you do, it's so easy to let your ambition rob you of your present blessings. It's so easy yeah. to just be like, man, I'm, I, I'm, I'm just so focused on what's left to do, though. Who cares? I went platinum. I want to go diamond. And I don't give a fuck about 10 platinum songs. I want 20 and I want a Grammy and I want to mm-hmm. do the Rose Bowl. It's like, yeah, bro, but like chill for a second and clap it up for yourself and that's what's crazy about the misconception with me they think like i'm just the most pat myself on the back Man. and it's really i'm not like it's really i'm not like in my day-to-day i don't be focused on none of this shit yeah. bro i'm focused on what the fuck else i should and could be doing and it makes me depressed because it's to the point where i'd be i'd be feeling like i'm broke still right you know what i'm saying like i'd be feeling like i'm broke Sitting in this house, like depressed, like damn, man. Who? What am I, man? This this shit isn't even working out. And I'm like, what? Yeah, like, wait a you gotta second. Look around. Yeah. Because I'm so focused on this next goal that until I achieve this next goal, I don't feel successful. Right. And that's where like my ambition robs me. So that's why I have to have tweets like, nah, man. You know what? And not even tweets, but the moments of clarity that mm-hmm. I want to share with the world and my fans to maybe it'll help them. But it's like, nah. Like, this shit is fucking beautiful. This is everything I asked for. And if I die right now, I did it. Yeah. Everything after this point is fucking extra. Except the Grammy. I always wanted a Grammy yeah. too. After that, though, after that, everything is fucking extra. I've done everything. Anything else at this point is like, oh, we're just fucking around. Right. I never was like, I want to get me and my mom a Bentley. That was like, fuck it shit. Or a purple Rolex. That was also just fucking <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? Like it was, yeah. it was buy my mama house, get her a beach house, like fucking go platinum on my debut. Uh, Take her to s- Egypt, have the sand on those. Yeah, but see, all that shit was actually yeah. like I had like a very small bucket list, yeah. like platinum debut, a Grammy, a beach house for my mom, sold out tour, and do some arenas, yeah. and be a millionaire, and buy my sister a Range Rover. That was right. it, bro. That was it. So I did all that shit, except the Grammy. So at this point, it's like, it's, you know, you got to make a new bucket list. But at the same time, I got to just, I got to just appreciate what the fuck I have and what I've done to get here and how bad I wanted all right. this, bro. And everyone needs to tap back into that space of when you used to want what you currently have, man. Like, and it's hard to do. And you don't want to live there for too long yeah. because then you get complacent. But every once in a while, man, like pull back up to your old self and be like, you know what? Right. Yeah, we did this shit. You did it, man. Yeah, like you're in a place now where a list that maybe the same list you could have posted six years ago does nothing, but that same list today makes the world go fucking yeah, crazy. it's crazy. But that's a real place of power. Why is your voice so fucking But Because yeah. you did that. Yeah. You did that. And it's like, take a couple minutes to fucking... Cheers, you know what I'm saying? Cheers to that, cheers to us. And you got to take those minutes and moments to celebrate the wins. Absolutely. And the problem with fucking losers, <laughs> actual losers, <laughs> is that they don't celebrate their wins and or they don't have any. So watching you celebrate yours yeah. feels like arrogance. Yes. Why? Why? I'm supposed to. Y'all want me depressed out here? Yeah. I got to celebrate my wins, man. Otherwise, I'm robbing myself of my blessings, bro. Right. And the other thing I need to remind myself, too... Is that comparison is the thief. Thief of joy. It is, bro. Yeah, it is. And it's and it's and it's comparison forces you comparison forces you in a jealous place and it forces you to count other people's blessings instead of your own. Mm. And that's where that's where I get fucked up a lot at I'll look at my songs, I'll look at numbers. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, this is hard. I look at other people's shit, I'm like, fuck, I'm not doing enough. And yeah. then and all of a sudden I'm ungrateful. And I'm like, man, I can't. I can't get in that place where 
these people's lives that I've changed, they don't all of a sudden they don't mean anything mm. because maybe this person's numbers on the screen look more. You don't know what's going on really. You don't know what's real, what's not. And like, right. why does it matter what they're doing over there? You know? But we gotta remind ourselves of that shit. Right. And I respect you, you know, for keeping lyricism alive. Yes, and uh, inviting right. me to your humble abode, Russ. Thank you for coming. Absolutely. So uh, cheers to that. Cheers. Into a uh, prosperous 2021. And tequila tastes better the more you drink. It's huh? not bad. <laughs> <laughs> We out here. My name is B Dot. This is here with Russ. Peace.